Nelson. All out blitz by Alabama State. No safety in the middle of the field. Timmons, his favorite receiver, was just able to get up to see him. He didn't have to beat a safety. Once he beat the guy at the line of scrimmage, it was clear sailing. Nelson, his 16th touchdown pass of the year. 50 yards to Tyrone Timmons. And you can see the pressure that Alabama State is trying to bring. Everybody is in the box. Timmons, great over-the-shoulder catch. That's the type of catch that you can usually drop, but he pulled it in and scored. The extra point is good from Joseph Blanco. And just like that, Mississippi Valley State, the Delta Devils are on the board. We mentioned these two teams, two of the highest scoring teams in the SWAC, and they start off that way. And if you live by the blitz, you die by the blitz. Aries Nelson here with the deep throw and catch, taking the early 7-0 lead. Alabama State is on their heels. They had a slow start last week against Grambling. We'll see if they can rebound fast this week. They certainly did. They fell behind by 25 in that game. As you take a look at Tyrone Timmons, the junior out of Tampa, Florida. And Tyrone Timmons with his seventh touchdown grab of the year to put the Delta Devils on the scoreboard for in just under one minute. A 59-second drive set up by a Clarence Cotton return up to the 39. And it was Mississippi Valley State able to move the ball right downfield. And talking to the offensive coordinator from Mississippi Valley, Roger Totten, he said that Alabama State likes to blitz a lot with the zero blitz, meaning that they don't have a safety in the middle of the field. And he felt like when you do that, you're trying to hide something. They're going to take their chances deep, and they were able to strike early and get a seven-point lead to start off. They certainly were. So now to be Mississippi Valley State, Davin Davis to do the chores on the kickoff. And a short kick is going to be taken at the 24-yard line. A fair catch signaled in and made by Alabama State. So here come the Hornets on offense for the first time. Their quarterback is Tavares Jackson, who has 24 touchdown passes, only five interceptions this year, over 2,500 yards of offense and 62% completion percentage. Yeah, he has an extremely high passing efficiency. And when you only have five interceptions with the 2,515 yards and 24 touchdowns. That means you're extremely efficient and you're not making a lot of mistakes. His favorite receiver is Al Vance Robinson, who has 53 catches this year. So let's see if the Hornets can answer what the Delta Devils brought in the first minute of this game. Well, they wanted to go downfield to the aforementioned Robinson, but the pass was too far. Again, that south wind probably affecting that ball just a little bit. Here are the backs and receivers for the Hornets. Keldrick Williams, who is averaging about five yards a carry. Lee Carter, Chris Maddox, Robinson, who just was uh, trying to hook up on that last pass play, and Clifton Cotton. When you look at the offensive line, it's Hatton, Benneby, Dunson, Brown, and Warford. A front line that averages over 300 pounds. Three freshmen on that offensive line, and they've been getting better each game as the season goes on. Second and 10 for the Hornets. And on the draw play, the give is to Williams, and he is met after a gain of five at the at the 29-yard line. Let's take a look at Mississippi Valley State defensively. There's their front four, Myrick, Green, Johnson, and Pullum. The linebackers are some of the best in this conference, and McDonald, Knight, and Prout. How about Prout with 91 tackles on the year, and Knight has 90. In the secondary, it's Fulbright, Irons, Marshall, and Wilson. That was Irons delivering that big hit on that last play coming from the safety spot in some run support. Well, at the 29, a third and six. The pass is caught. It'll be enough for the first down as Hoffman able to hang on. And he gets the chains to move as he gets the ball up to the 36. And that's what Alabama State does well. It was a third down in situation. And they're 47% on third down as far as conversions. That's extremely good. That's keeping your drive alive, moving along, giving another chance to get another set of downs. Easy throw and catch. Receiver just sits in the zone. Tavares Jackson's going to hit an open receiver. He doesn't miss those type of throws. Jackson signaling the play in. And from the shotgun, the inside give is to Williams, and he breaks a couple of tackles, and a nice gain on first down up to the 43. Kendrick Williams 
He's a guy that, as I mentioned, averaging over five yards a carry. They don't go to the run all that often. I mean, they throw for almost 300 yards a game, but they do run the ball pretty effectively at 200 yards a game. I mean, with Keldrick Williams and Robert Randolph, they have a two-headed attack. Both of these guys are efficient. Keldrick Williams over 3,000 career rushing yards, so you know he can get it done on the ground. Second and three. Here comes Williams again. Nice little fake moves before he got to the line of scrimmage and he takes it across midfield and down into Delta Devil territory to the 47. And Alabama State's biggest problem is who to give the ball to. So many talented players here. You can see the offensive line. Three freshmen starting early in the year, but they create a nice size hole. He's able to get through there for five yards before he's even touched. All running backs would take that as a, as a good positive play. Williams, one of the best running backs in Hornet history, needs just four touchdowns for a new school record. Here comes Williams again, this time met behind the line and a loss of three. Good play defensively by Carlos Myrick. Also, Jared Prout was in on the stop. Yeah, you hear so much about the great linebackers that Mississippi Valley has, and it's really catered for the linebackers to make plays, but also the defensive linemen are making big plays here. The linebacker just shoots the gap. Shoots the gap. Myrick is able to get off of a block and also tackle him low. These guys are just really efficient. Jared Prout, Tyler Knight, two big-time players on defense. I should say that's the 92nd tackle of the year for Prout. And counting. Pass across the middle is caught. Chris Maddox, and Maddox goes into the end zone for the tying touchdown. Wow. A quick strike from Jackson to Maddox. And with the extra point on coming, a chance for Alabama State to tie this game. So if you like offense, this is the place to be because both <laughs> of these quarterbacks can get up and down the field, you can see, through the air and also on the ground. Somehow, I don't think this game's going to end 7-0, huh? No, not at all. I'm not going to go through an overtime period. All that. This game will probably be both teams in the 40s or 50s. Just fasten your seatbelt, folks. This could be a bumpy ride. Now it's Anthony Johnson for the point after, and that is no good. We've been having trouble with the extra points. Billings has been struggling lately. They tried Johnson. He misses. So not the tying score for Alabama State. But they get within one as Tavares Jackson goes up top and finds Chris Maddox. It's 7-6, and we're barely four minutes into the game. Number three, right in the middle of your screen, Chris Maddox, his seventh touchdown grab of the year. They could not convert the point after, though, so Alabama State pulls within one of Mississippi Valley State, and now we're ready for another kickoff from Billings. The last time, we watched Clarence Cotton bring it up to almost the 40-yard line. There's Cotton again right at the goal line. Cotton finds a seam and twists his way up to the 24-yard line. How about that last touchdown play? And when you look at it, Eddie, there's always something that works to make a big play work. Yeah, football is truly a team sport, and you have to have everyone involved. I mean, Keldrick Williams stepped up and made a great block. You can see with the arrow on Keldrick Williams, he's a running back. He leads second in the conference in rushing, but he makes the block, steps up here and blocks. Jared Prout, who is the number one sacker, in the SWAC conference with nine sacks from his linebacker position. So if he doesn't make that block, Tavares Jackson doesn't have a chance to throw that block, throw that pass, and get the touchdown to Chris Maddox. Ah, uh, it's the inside game. I like it. With Eddie Robinson, I'm Dave Armstrong, welcoming you to SWAC football. What a wild beginning. Four minutes in, and we've already seen 13 points. And look out, here comes Woods. Woods breaks it to the outside. And finally hauled down at the 25-yard line. Big play by Mississippi Valley, not just through the air, but also on the ground. Just a delayed draw by Kelvin Woods here. See the guys up front. Well, actually, just a lead lead draw here. Guys just coming downhill and making the block. The fullback had a good block on Billy Gresham. He's off to the races. Nobody in the middle of the field, and he's down the field for a big play. Huge play for Calvin Woods, running through those big trees on the line, and Woods taking it out of the forest all the way down to the 25. Oh, a lot of movement. Saw first Alabama State moving, but I think they're going to whistle this against Mississippi Valley State. Our referee today is Charles Lewis. Part of the snap, false start. Offense number 72, five-yard penalty, still first down. 
Roger Totten, who is the offensive coordinator and the brother of Willie Totten, the head coach. You look at Aries Nelson. Nelson on the year with 15 touchdown passes. We could update that. Actually, he's got one more here today, so 16 on the year with only six interceptions. Two of the finest quarterbacks in the SWAC going head to head here today. So after the penalty of five, first and 15 on a draw play, here comes the freshman Joey Haggett, stopped after a short gain of just a couple. When you look at the backs and receivers for the Delta Devils, we feature Calvin Woods, who had that big run, Walter Burnett. Tyrone Timmons, the leading receiver with 50 catches, seven touchdowns, including one today, Shang Moore and Clarence Cotton. The offensive line, a big one, and Birch, Williamson, Fields, Bedell, and Foster. Second down, we'll call it second and 14. If you can see Timmons was able to go up there and tip it to himself and just make a circus catch in the end zone for Mississippi Valley as the scoring continues at a rapid pace. I thought Nelson was going to be sacked on the play. Somehow, though, he was able to get rid of the ball just in time. And then Timmons with an extremely athletic play to hang on to that ball and fall into the end zone. His second touchdown of the day. The point after is good. And Mississippi Valley State with two touchdown bombs from Nelson to Timmons today. They lead it 14 to 6. What a combination. Nelson and Timmons connecting for the second time here today. Electrifying offense to begin the day. Mississippi Valley State, two touchdown passes from Aries Nelson to Tyrone Timmons. How about this last one? Well, that was just a great throw and catch. You can see Tyrone Timmons, he's a 6'3 wide receiver, working against a 5'10 cornerback and Brandon Averett, and he was able just to get up there and tip that ball to himself. And you can see Kerry Frazier coming here with the pressure. He leads the Alabama State in four and a half. They almost gets there. He gets the throw off. Good things happen down the field when you guys block up front. That's a great adjustment by Timmons to be able to hang on to that ball with the guy draped all over him. Another short kick here by Davis. It's taken and then running sideways, skirting down the 28-yard line. Last couple of weeks have been tough on Alabama State. We we'll go back two weeks ago at Legion Field in Birmingham, the 64th Magic City Classic. Alabama State looked in complete control. They jumped out to a 16-0 lead, but then A&M battles back, and in the end, Kelsey Luke, the one-yard quarterback sneak, Alabama A&M with the win. Then, last week, at the Cramden Bowl in Montgomery, Alabama, four touchdown passes by Grambling quarterback Bruce Eugene. That gave uh, a big lead, 32-7. Then, Tavares Jackson and the Hornets rallied, but not enough. 20 straight points, but they lose 32-27. A couple of heartbreakers for the Hornets. When you look at the SWAC standings, here's how it's reflected. This is the last SWAC game of the regular season for Alabama State. They need to win and then hope because Alabama A&M still has two games remaining. Alcorn State still part of the mix as well. And uh, Grambling has already wrapped up the Western Division. They're waiting to see whether they're going to face either Alabama State, Alabama A&M, or possibly Alcorn State. Alcorn State has the slimmest chance of all. Yeah, and Alabama State really needs a win today to give themselves a chance going down the stretch. They need to win them both going down the stretch. And uh, nice run again by Keldrick Williams right through the gut. He takes it up to the 42. They'll move the chains of first down for Alabama State. And with all the scoring that's going on, you have to still establish a running game. Alabama State can't get into the fast break tempo of Mississippi Valley State. That's what they do. Alabama State does have a good ground game, so you can see they're going to still run the ball and have ball control and not just try and throw themselves into the game. That's the analysis of Eddie Robinson. I'm Dave Armstrong. Williams runs around the right side and gets it up to the 45, maybe the 46-yard line. In a game like this, Eddie, you kind of get the sense, though, that you're in like a fast break offense. I mean, you better 
better put points on the board. Yeah, and that's what the job of the offensive coordinator. You can't just panic and realize, hey, we're down seven. Our defense is having trouble. You still have to run your plays. You have your offensive sets. You have two good runners in Keldrick Williams and Robert Randolph. Let them get their touches and try to wear down a Mississippi Valley defense. Charles Coe, third year guiding the Hornets. And pretty good first two years, wouldn't you say? They won the SWAC championship a year ago, played for the SWAC championship two years ago, trying to get back there once again. A little draw play to Keldrick Williams. And goes. look out, there goes Williams with one man to beat. And Williams taken down at the five-yard line. He eluded Samuel Irons, but then some more defense came from Mississippi Valley State to save the touchdown. But what a great catch and run by Williams. And Alabama State does a great job of setting up screens, wide receiver screens, running back screens, and they don't really have a tendency. You can see Williams started on the left side and came across the formation. It's always hard to stop. Once he gets into the open field, he's a runner again. He can make guys miss. Mississippi Valley State really fortunate that he didn't get into the end zone on that play. Pierre Marshall saved the touchdown. Now Williams breathing hard as it's first and goal for Alabama State on the five-yard line. Williams hit right at the five. Good tackle. Jared Prout coming through there, and you can see he's the leading tackler on the team. They go back and forth, him and Tyler Knight, and that was just a big-time hit that he put on Williams. He really was. Man, I mean, that was two big guys colliding. Prout's at 220, Williams at 208. And, and these and two guys, Proud and Knight, man, look at that. A combined 181 tackles. And very seldom you see two linebackers with eight and seven and a half sacks. And, and that's un, unlikely because most of the time it's the defensive linemen who are getting pressure on the quarterback. They blitz their linebackers an awful lot. Throwing it up into the corner of the end zone, and it's a touchdown. That's Al Vance Robinson. What a great timing route from Jackson to Robinson. Al Vance Robinson, he's the big-time receiver that Alabama State has, and you can see just a, just perfect execution. Guys running out of the back of the end zone. He threw it in the only place that Al Vance could catch it. Really, really good throw and catch. Good execution by Alabama State. Are there defenses out on the field? Well, they're it trying. seen that way. <laughs> man, oh, man, this is just two high-powered offenses going. And I thought maybe Alabama State might go for a two-point conversion here. Instead, they're going to try to kick the extra point. Johnson, remember, he just missed one. This one, though, is up, and it is good. So Johnson able to hit the point after, and that pulls the Hornets back within one again. We've got a timeout on the field. Al Vance Robinson with his 10th touchdown reception of the year. Jackson has two today. We welcome you back to Rice Totten Stadium, campus of Mississippi Valley State. SWAC football today with Eddie Robinson. I'm Dave Armstrong. Glad to have you here. We promised you offense at the top of the show. Sometimes we don't live up to our promises. Today, we are living up to that promise. As you see, Alvance Robinson with a five-yard touchdown reception and a drive that took under three minutes and went 71 yards. Here comes Cotton. Well, this time he's going to just stay in the end zone. And it will be Mississippi Valley State starting at their own 20-yard line. The way these offenses are moving the ball, it almost doesn't matter where you start. Yeah, it really, it really doesn't because they're going up and down. You can see the screen here. Alabama State is a great screen team. Keldrick Williams started on one side and actually crossed the formation to get that screen. And once in the open field, he's a big-time runner. He can run the ball and also catch extremely well. Touchdown pass going to Al Vance Robinson. Good throw and catch. Back of the end zone. Only place that Al Vance could catch it. Tavares Jackson did an excellent job of getting it up and over the cornerback. Great touchdown with Alabama State to get him within one point. Of course, they missed the first extra point, so they're still down by one. Stephen Fulbright had good coverage, but Al Vance Robinson on the perfect timing route, able to grab it from Jackson. A discussion on the field. There's a penalty on the kickoff. Looks like it's going to be against Mississippi Valley State and back him up to the 10 yard line. No official word yet though from Charles Lewis our referee. Coach Titan showing a lot of concern wanting to get out there and get everything straightened out of course. His fourth year here for the Delta Devils. Illegal block on the kicking team number six. 15 yards from the 20 yard line. First down. 
Both teams had backed up to where they looked like they were going to start at the 10. So this is in Totten's favor here as they mark off 15. So again, great field position for the Delta Devils. They start at their own 35 yard line after the illegal block. And I don't think they need great field position the way they're scoring today. <laughs> That's for sure. Two touchdown tosses from Nelson to Tyrone Timmons today. Willie Totten is a great, I mean great quarterback here at Mississippi Valley State. Returning to his alma mater, guiding the Delta Devils now in their fourth year and a chance for them to have their first winning season since 1996. The give is to Woods. Woods is cut down at the 42 yard line. Our first update of the day. Let's go to Mike Hall. All right, Dave, remember the last time USC lost? It was when they played Cal at Cal. Here, third and goal, taking him on again. Lendale White pops it in. An interception set it up, and Matt Liner going for seven for seven on that opening drive. Helps as well. From number one to number two, Texas taking on KU. Vince Young to Lima Sweet. Like the killers, he's going to bring it back down, bring it back down tonight. Texas is up 14-0 early. A little bad blood between those teams, Kansas and Texas. Thanks, Mike. Back here, it's second down and four yards to go. The ball spotted at the 41, and now a whistle will stop play. How about this offense from these two teams so far here today? Look at that. I mean, Alabama State, they've run 13 plays, 147 yards. Mississippi Valley State, even more efficient. Seven plays, 142 yards. Each team has scored two touchdowns. And seven plays for Mississippi Valley, two of those resulting in touchdowns. That's a great percentage. Well, penalty there will back up the Delta Devils five yards, so that makes it second and nine now. Nelson was scrambling and didn't get enough on the throw. A pass intended for Carter. Third and nine. That's what you're going to have to do. You have to get pressure on both of these quarterbacks, Nelson and Tavares Jackson. You can't let these guys just sit in the pocket and execute throws. Here he can't follow through, so the ball was a little bit short. Alabama State's going to have to really mix up blitzing occasionally and just letting the front four get up there and get some pressure to throw off his timing. Third and nine. We haven't had to face third and long in this game yet. Don't need third downs in this league. Nelson given time but again his throw is too low intended for Shang Moore but he shanked it if you will and the throw is low and now it'll be the first punt of the day Nelson saying man I'm sorry man those last two throws weren't up to standards Nelson is off to a quick start and that one Moore certainly had enough yardage there for the first down if the throw was on target. Yeah, good stop by Alabama State. I mean, you may not need too many stops the way these offenses are scoring. You want to turn the ball off and turn the ball over and give your offense as many touches as possible today. Trey Butts is the punter for Mississippi Valley State. You saw Jay Peck back deep to get it for the Hornets. And he's standing inside his own 20. It's a good punt. Right at the 20. No fair catch. Pack takes it across the 30, up to the 33, a 13-yard return. Well, you look at one of the greatest in the game. Totten was the quarterback, but how about Jerry Rice? Wide receiver here in the early 80s, 301 receptions. 50 of those went for touchdowns. 4,693 yards, and in 84, his senior campaign, he finished ninth in the Heisman Trophy balloting. A two-time All-American. Rice, Totten Stadium. Great combination in the 80s. Combining again here on the name of the stadium. You look at the head coach, Willie Totten, and you look at his numbers, and his, look at that, over 13,000 yards. Amazing. 141 touchdowns in his career. And they were doing the run and shoot way back then in, in, when he was in college. And, of course, his nickname is Satellite Totten. And if you're in the SWAC, if you're a great player, you have to have a nickname. You know, Steve Air McNair, Sweetness Walter Payton. So once you get a nickname in the SWAC, you're officially a great player. And you can tell he put up big numbers in college. He certainly did. That satellite was working well. Great reception. Here. Great reception. And a draw play. 
big bruising fullback. As you had a, a good run there by Robert Randolph. I mean, he is a bruiser different than Keldrick Williams. And Randolph just punishing his way to another first down. And it, it is a change of pace back. I mean, you have Keldrick Williams, who's the quick guy. He doesn't look to make a miss. You can tell his, his yards after contact, the leg drive, he still pushes that pile four yards going forward. And he's a big guy, hard for the defense to stop, and just is a good change of pace from Keldrick. 5'10", 230. Here comes Randolph again. Both Randolph and Williams are seniors. And this time Randolph takes it across the 50, across midfield, down to the 46-yard line. And the coaches, uh, Coach Kapilovic, who's the offensive coordinator, I asked him, how do you determine how many carries does each player get? They try to alternate by quarters, but of course, if one back is hot, they leave him in there, they let him get his sweat going and let him get a lather up and, and keep moving. And then now you can see Randolph is getting his thing going and, and going along. And both of these guys have big rushing numbers on the year and as career players and they have a healthy competition. They both like to see the other one excel. Absolutely. Boy, that is a grand tandem. And there he goes again. Randolph, you can't bring him down with an arm tackle, that's for sure. He takes it all the way down to the 34. Tough on the defense when you've been chasing a little quick guy around all day. Now you have this big bruiser just coming up in here and just going downhill. I mean, he doesn't look to make a lot of guys miss. You can see he he runs within a, a three-yard side-to-side range. It's just pretty much straight to the goal post. And big physical runner and the offensive lineman like to block behind him. Another first down. First and ten. Jackson will give it to Randolph. If you, I think what they're saying is if you can't stop him, we're just going to keep running this play. He is a gain of four on first down down to the 30-yard line. Yeah, Mississippi Valley, man, they have a tough defense, a lot of good linebackers, but it's real demoralizing when you can't stop a guy running the ball downhill at you. That's always the hardest thing to do when teams get on the roll running and you just can't seem to get them off of that roll and make them do something different. Totten concerned one of his players is down at the 27-yard line, injured. That is Carlos Myrick, a junior out of Atlanta, Georgia. So, well, they tend to... Myrick will remind you that tonight, ESPNU's coverage of college football continues at 7 Eastern. Two teams from the SWAC battle as Jackson State Tigers meet the Prairie View A&M Panthers. College football on ESPNU tonight. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. They're going to help Myrick off the field. The unfortunate injury because you're going to need a good rotation of defensive linemen as Alabama State mixes up the run and the pass. You can see a big guy from Atlanta, Georgia, from Cedar Grove High School, and very effective player. And he's the guy, I mean, those guys up front, the defensive linemen, that allow Prout and Knight and McDonald, those linebackers, to run around and make plays and lead the conference in tackles. Well, there's another game we're going to keep a close eye on. Alabama A&M and Alcorn State still battling for the Eastern Division Championship. And, of course, Alabama State with much at stake as they view that game. They've got to be rooting today for Alcorn State. Good running here by Jackson. He'll move the chains again. He gets inside the 20 down to the 18-yard line. He's finally brought down by Prout. Yeah, Jackson is not just a passer. I mean, he's a guy that they can have design runs for. Here you can see it's just a naked bootleg. He fakes it up the middle. He takes off around the corner, and he turns into a running back. He makes guys miss with the spin move, and, and he's a guy who can go downhill running. He's a big quarterback, too, so he's tough to tackle for those little cornerbacks. He averages more than 300 yards a game in total offense. First and 10, ball spotted officially at the 19. Well, Jackson turned nothing into something. He gained at least a few yards. Looked like he was going to be stopped behind the line by Knight. And, David, we talked about those swag standings with that 7-7 seven, seven Alabama A&M and Alcorn score. Of course, you know, Alabama State lost to Alabama A&M just a couple weeks ago, so they're in the position now where they're on the outside looking in. They have to win, and they have to hope that Alabama A&M can drop a game so they can get back in first place because with the head-to-head, -head, they'll lose the tie against Alabama A&M. Yeah. If A&M wins out, simply put, they're the Eastern Division champion, and they'll face Grambling State. 
Pass is caught and taking it to the zone is Al Vance Robinson. Boy, a good run after the catch, his second touchdown of the day. And that's the screen game from Alabama State. They do it a lot of different ways. The wide receiver screens, you saw the running back screen earlier to Keldrick Williams, easy throw and catch. And once Al Vance Robinson gets in the open field, he's extremely dangerous. Everybody runs this. They call it the missile screen or the wide receiver screen. And the key is to get past those big offensive linemen and get one block and get north and south and get in the end zone. He did a great job of executing that play. Now Johnson to try to tack on the point after. The kick is no good. Wide left. Boy, that's two he has missed here today, Johnson. They have really struggled in the point after department, surprisingly, and yet they're 10 for 10 in the field goal department. Well, certainly when you think of the SWAC, you think of Eddie Robinson. The legendary living legend, Eddie G. Robinson, spent 57 seasons at Grambling State, the winningest coach in Division I AA. With 408 wins, Robinson consistently fielded stellar football teams. He got it. Young charges to successful lives, both on and off the gridiron. Great influence. And, of course, it was Willie Totten who got his really coaching start under the legendary Eddie Robinson. And this Eddie Robinson, my partner here today, no relation. And I know you get that all the time. But uh, I still, I still, though, I mean, it's got to be a thrill for you. I mean, to have the name Eddie Robinson and to know the legend that the coach had at Grambling State. Yeah, I mean, I've talked to him on numerous occasions. Just a great, great guy. I've seen him speak at tons of banquets. And just a great person to be around. Does he ever get confused with you? <laughs> Do they say, oh, are you related to that great young man who's doing college football on ESPNU? I don't think he gets that just yet. We're working on it. <laughs> One minute left here in the opening quarter. 101 to be exact as Alabama State has taken the lead here. They trailed in this game 7-0, trailed again 14-6, but now have scored back-to-back -back touchdowns and lead 1914. So let's see what Aries Nelson can do. Last time, it was Mississippi Valley State being stopped. They had to punt, only punt in this first quarter. And the give is to Woods. He stopped after a short game. We get you back to Mike Hall. Mike. All right, let's take another look into the number two team, Texas, taking on KU. This is 64 yards away from the end zone. This is Vince Young looking for Quan Crosby, Lugie. Laying it up top, Crosby amongst others, Swede. They've got some guys that have emerged as playmakers, really helped the development of Vince Young as a passer. Wide receivers have certainly helped him out, and now it's a three-touchdown lead, Dave. All right, Kansas, one of the top defenses in the country, but struggling against the number two team in the land, the Texas Longhorns. And I mentioned some bad blood between those teams. It stems back to last year's game. Texas pulled out a late victory in Lawrence and won by only four. There's a lot being said about that game in the papers in both Lawrence, Kansas, and in Austin, Texas. Again, a short game here for Calvin Woods, and it's going to bring up third and long. Just try to run a quick option, just a change of pace. It's always good when you can run the option because defenses don't like to prepare for that during the week. It's just one more thing they have to be concerned about. All right, first quarter comes to a close. A high-powered, high-scoring first down. Touchdowns reigning supreme here at Rice Totten Stadium. That ball in the air is being taken into the end zone. Both of these teams going back and forth. And after one quarter of play, it is Alabama State leading 19 to 14. Go, go. It was the Delta Devils cheering first, but lately it's been Alabama State as they have scored back-to-back -to -back touchdowns to forge ahead 19-14. Second quarter about to start, and the Delta Devils facing a third and eight from their own 24. Nelson stepping up. And fires a pass in the direction of Moore, but at his feet, incomplete. You look at these two quarterbacks today, you look at Nelson and Jackson, and uh, six of seven for Jackson, now four of nine for Nelson, 128 yards, five touchdowns between them and no interceptions. Yeah, five touchdowns in one quarter of play in 15 minutes. That's amazing. And you can see Tavares Jackson, very efficient, six of seven. 
almost perfect and three touchdowns on the day already. Well, it's twice now in a row that Nelson and the offense were not able to put points on the board. And it's Trey Butts back to punt one more time from his own 10 yard line. Jay Peck waiting for it at his own 30. Low snap. Punt taken to the 33 by Peck. Peck bouncing off a couple of would-be tacklers and gets it up to the 47-yard line. So where exactly are we? Where is Mississippi Valley State, the home of the Delta Devils? You look at Mississippi, we're basically right in the middle of the state. Lots of cotton around. And when you look at Itabina, there it is. I mean, this is cotton-grown country. Everywhere you can see off of Highway 82 and just Highway pretty seven, much yeah. nowhere else here except Mississippi Valley. It's like a stadium in the middle of nowhere. Do you see those huge bales of cotton on that road? <laughs> I mean, it, it, like semi-truck sized bales of cotton. Here comes Randolph again. Didn't see a hole in the middle of the line. Decides to pop it outside. And with a would-be tackler hanging on for dear life, it's Randolph taking it down to the 40. Boy, he is a load. You can see how hard he is to stop him. He, he has the speed to bounce it outside. Guy who's a big physical player. He doesn't like to make a lot of people miss. He wants to run over. He doesn't see anything inside. Hey, I go around outside, just keep those big legs churning, get an extra eight yards before I can get tackled by Clayton McDonald, number 43. And McDonald is certainly no slouch over 80 tackles this year. Give you an update from the Alabama A&M Alcorn State game in a second. First and ten here. First time to give is to Williams. And he'll push the pile forward about three yards. All right, what's going on between those teams? Oh, it's Alabama A&M now leading 14 to seven. Again, if A&M wins out, they would face Grambling for the SWAG championship. And this game is also important for Alcorn State. Even though they have three losses, three losses in the conference, if they can win their remaining three conference games, and Alabama State lose and a couple other things happen, they could possibly get into the Eastern Division Championship game, into the SWAC Championship game also. So they still have a lot at stake to play in this 2005 season. They sure do. One thing we know, Grambling will be in the championship. They are unbeaten in this conference, including their win last week against these Hornets. We got a flag down thrown at the 37 yard line as Randolph fights forward down to the 30. Let's see what the hanky's all about. Could be a hold as they sort it out. But talking to Coach Cole, he feels like Robert Randolph is a player who can possibly play in the NFL, not as a tailback, but as a fullback. I mean, you have a, a lot of guys who convert from that tailback to fullback position. And he's physical enough, as you can tell by the way he runs, and he's a willing blocker also. Holding offense, number 88, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay, second down. So if the scouts have been coming to Alabama State, they're not just looking at Tavares Jackson and Al Vance Robinson and those big time players. There's also uh, Robert Randolph, who's, a, who's another player who can run and block and do a lot of different things. He actually plays on the punt team and coverage kicks also. So, of course, going into the next level, if you're a backup running back or something, you have to be able to play special teams. And a big penalty there, a holding call, backs him up 10 and makes it instead of very close to a first down, if not a first down, it's now second and 16. On the screen. Staying on his feet is Maddox, and he's close to a first down as we get you back to Mike Hall to you. Mike. Dave, any update on Miami and Wake? Canes coming off their big win last week. This is Charlie Jones getting the ball around 33 yard line and get some speed and in the end zone. His second score of the day. Dave, we had Larry Coke on our Inside the Pole show. We asked him what's the best part of his team, the difference from week one to now. He said his offensive line, and without Tyrone Moss, he's making that look true. Well, that's for sure. So good stuff for Miami. You wondered if they maybe have a little letdown against Wake today after that scintillating win for them one week ago. On third and four, Randolph a 
eludes one tackler and gets a first down at the 28-yard line. Hey, the big man showing some moves. He has some speed. I mean, he's not just a, a run over you guy. He can also make you miss and sidestep you. Alabama State likes to get into that little cluster formation where they run this little crack toss play. We've seen that a lot. Randolph just determined, knows where the first down marker is and able to stretch and get across, get that first down and move the chains once again. Eddie, he's one of those guys that when he runs, he's leaning forward. So he's always going to make forward progress. All the time. Very seldom do you see him actually lose yards on the play. So a first down, that's a big first down for Alabama State. They had faced a second and 16, and now there goes Williams around the corner, and Williams goes into the end zone. Wow, what a run for Kelbrick Williams. That's why you have two productive running backs. You see the big guy who's able to pound, 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 and you come with the speed guy going to the opposite side of the field, and he's able to outrun everyone to the end zone. Keldrick Williams, his sixth touchdown of the year on the ground. He takes it 29 yards to the house. So Alabama State, they have scored a touchdown on every one of their possessions so far here today. And Mississippi Valley State is starting to fall off the pace. Now another point after try. And this time it's Ricky Billings. Billings who had been doing the Lion's share of the kicking this year back in there after Johnson had missed two of three. So Billings does get the point after, but it's Keldrick Williams going around the outside for yet another touchdown for Alabama State. That goal line has been busy today as Alabama State continues to score and score and score again with Eddie Robinson Jr. I'm Dave Armstrong swag football at its finest and today Alabama State is putting on quite an offensive show. They have touchdowns on every possession here today and now after this kickoff and it's Calvin Woods who is back at his own 10 yard line along with Clarence Cotton. And the ball is going to settle into the arms of Woods at his own 15. Trying to create a seam on the outside, and Woods is hauled down out of bounds, and a flag comes in late. This will be unnecessary roughness as Woods was already out of bounds when he was hit. A mental mistake by Alabama State on that play. Personal foul. Charles Lewis, our referee here today, the personal foul. Will be tacked on after the run. Let's go back to the touchdown run. You can see Sam Irons, he's a strong safety, the extra guy who comes into the box. He's running this toss crack play. He tries to run underneath the block. He cuts off Julius Love. Nobody can get the pursuit to the outside. Guy with Keldrick Williams, he gets the corner with that type of speed. No one will catch him. So once Irons, the strong safety, comes up, if he doesn't get him, then it's off to the races. What your coach tells you is you have 10 other guys inside who want to play. And when you don't do the correct thing and get this play back inside, you don't let your other 10 guys play. And if you don't make the play, it's kind of like you gave it up for the it's, team. It's risky, but it, had they been able to make the play behind the line, we're not even talking about it. Instead, he doesn't make the play, and it's another touchdown for Williams. Here comes Nelson now, avoiding the rush, and wide open is Tyrone Timmons. Timmons takes it all the way down to the 38-yard line, finally stopped by Bobby Coleman. You can't have Timmons that open because he's the guy who scored the only two touchdowns today. He's the lead receiver who makes all of the big plays. You can see Nelson just looking at him the whole way. The defender gets a little bit confused in coverage. Nelson stays with him. Great job by Timmons with the uncover move just to get open and catch that ball in, in traffic. Good composure by Nelson, too, to step up into the pocket. First and 10 from the 38 now. And Mississippi Valley State, they know, Eddie, that they better score a touchdown here. Or this game could get out of, out of hand. Nelson hit as he throws. And we go back to Mike Hall at the U. Mike. All right, another update on the number two team in the land. Texas taking on KU. This is a punt gone to Aaron Ross. And you know, Tommy, we talk about Texas' offense and their defense, but special teams brings it too. Without question, this is what's separating the top teams in the country is their ability to score in special teams right now. Texas blowing out this Kansas team. 28-0, still in the first, Dave. Hmm. 
Amazing, Mike. I mean, they were favored to win by 33, and a lot of experts thought that was way too many against that tough Kansas defense. It looks like way too few right. right now. It'll be more than that by the end of the day at the rate they're going. There's a flag down. Looks like offside, so a free play here. And off to the races is Timmons. Timmons stays on his Woo! and finally whacked down at the four. John Hogan with a vicious hit. He's the emotional and spiritual leader of this Alabama State team. And of course, the big hitter you can see right there, but not after Timmons is able to get the inside of the five yard line of Alabama State. Down to the four, the flag we think will be offsides on the Hornets. Wide receiver screen, he gets up inside. And what you want to teach those wide receivers to do on this screen is to get in and then get back out to the sideline when you can run. Just trying to go for some extra yards and oh, out of nowhere. Oh. <laughs> John Hogan. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Look at that hit. Hogan, no hero right now to Timmons. Not at all. And he's a physical guy. I mean, he plays with a lot of emotions. Just a 5'9 linebacker, but he delivers a big punch. So first and goal at the four. The penalty was offsides. And obviously, the Delta Devils declined the penalty. On a little draw play, fighting for that extra yard is Woods. They're going to say the ball was down. No fumble on the play. They'll spot it down around the two-yard line. Of course, we just talked about how Mississippi Valley has to score points to keep up with this Alabama State high-powered offense. And the Mississippi Valley is, what, 33.4? They're averaging 33.4 points. They're second in the conference, and Alabama State is averaging 33.1. They're third in the conference. So both of these teams can score points. It's up to the defense, one of them, to step up and make a play at some point. I'll make your prediction. Both teams are above 33 today. They're going to hit their stride at halftime at the rate <laughs> we're going. So second and goal from the two. And not much room to run inside for Joey Haggett. He gains maybe a yard. And ball spotted again inside the two-yard line where it brings up third and goal. Tough call here from Mississippi Valley. Alabama State showing some determined defense, not just going to let them run across the goal line. Our defensive coach has always told us in NFL, Greg Williams, don't let them run across the goal line. Make them pick it up and pass it, but it's an insult when they just hand it off and run it. So Alabama State is trying to have that philosophy stand up today. 70% second in the swag in red zone defense. Tough chore here. And now Nelson's going to leave nothing to chance. He'll call a timeout. The first timeout taken by the Delta Devils here today. He wanted to make sure of the play call. Would you throw it here? I mean, you've been stopped twice now trying to run the ball into the end zone. Do you throw it maybe, or do something play action? If I'm the coach, I want to throw it. I want to get Nelson. He's a runner and a thrower. Get him in a rollout situation where he can look for Timmons in the back of the end zone, but also run. All right, we'll see what happens when we return the Delta Devils on the doorstep. So it's Alabama State trying to keep Mississippi Valley State out of the end zone and maintain their 12-point advantage. But as you stare into the eyes of Aries Nelson, he's facing a third and goal at the two. They try to run it again and push the pile forward. It's Joey Haggett with his third touchdown of the year. The old adage, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And on the third try, they get into the end zone. You like to have, like, you have to like Coach Titan. I mean, three straight runs. We're not going to try to fool you, try to trick you and throw the ball. We're going to be physical, just come downhill. The big offensive lineman pushing in the extra effort by Joey Haggett to get it across the end zone. Now Blanco on for the extra point. Make it a five-point contest. It is up, and it is true right down the heart. Extra point is good from Blanco. And look out. Here comes Mississippi Valley State again. They've made it a five-point contest under nine to go here in the first half. Take another look at Haggett fighting for the end zone. I mean, you can see the initial contact. The initial contact was... Right at about the two-yard line, and he just was determined. Spun around, went in backwards, reached pay dirt. Much needed touchdown, cut this lead to 21 to 26. I have a sneaking suspicion as you take one more look at this touchdown that Willie Totten would have gone for it on fourth down. 
I mean, I, he knows he's in that kind of a shootout type game. Right, you can't leave. Uh, he could have got the three-point field goal, of course, but you can't leave four points on the field right there at the two-yard line with Alabama State, Tavares Jackson, all the things they can do. I mean, we know that Mississippi Valley State's offense is highly ranked also, but this game is going to come down to maybe who has the ball last. Both teams need to score and be real aggressive with the play calling. Well, so far, Mississippi Valley State has not been able to stop Alabama State. They have not only scored every time, they have scored a touchdown every time they have had the ball. So it's Davin Davis whose kicks so far have been short. He'll be kicking it towards Desmond Foster and Keldrick Williams, although the ball hasn't gotten that far yet. Well, I think the reason he's kicking short, because remember last week they had two 100-yard runs um, brought back against them. Alcorn State had 200-yard kickoff returns against Mississippi Valley State, so they're in a situation where I don't think they want to kick it deep and take that chance. A deeper kick this time. Jay Peck cut down inside the 15 at the 12. Good defensive play there. Tonight, ESPNU's coverage of college football continues at 7 Eastern. Two more teams from the SWAC. We'll go head-to-head. -head. It's Jackson State, the Tigers, meeting the Panthers of Prairie View A&M. College football on ESPNU tonight at 7 Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Well, let's see what Alabama State does with this field position, starting at their own 12-yard line. Randolph stood up after a short gain as we get you back to Mike Hall at the U. Mike. And Dave will go back out west. USC and Cal Matt Liner inside the red zone. Steve Israel, and he doesn't have to throw all the time. Hey, usually you see him using his arm to, for six. This time he uses his legs. It doesn't matter. It's all good. Six points. 14 to three. Meanwhile, uh, Tommy, it's LSU and Bama. Brody Croyle to DJ Hall. You're going to have to trust us. That's a score right there. All right, a score there. And uh, Alabama trying to remain one of those unbeatens taking on LSU today. Jackson scrambling, stops, keeps going, and finally goes down. I think he saw some defenders coming, including Shavin Johnson, number 92, and he said, I, I think I'm going to get down right about right now. First yeah. down. That's big Shavin Johnson is in 6'1", 305 pounds. You don't want to take those kind of licks as a quarterback. Good decision by Tavares. No one's open up the field, and he can make people miss. You can see the cutback. Tyler Knight unable to bring him down, and sooner or later those defenders will catch up with you, so you don't want to take big licks as a quarterback. Yeah, Johnson, as you mentioned, 6'1", 305. He casts a huge shadow. First down here for Alabama State. Randolph looked like he was going to be stopped at the line. You can't stop him there, and he's able to pick up four or five on first down before he's stopped by Myrick. Good to see Myrick back in the game. And for all the passing that Alabama State does, I mean, they still have a really good ground game. They've been controlling the second quarter really with the run. They've had some big passes, some big wide, wide receiver screens. But for the most part, they've been efficient running the ball with Tavares Jackson and also um, Keldrick Williams and Robert Randolph. All three of those guys have had some runs in the second quarter. And a timeout taken here by Tavares Jackson. Jackson didn't like what he saw from the defense and burns one of his three first half timeouts. He still have two remaining. So 7-11 remaining here in this opening quarter, opening uh, half, I should say, with Alabama State leading by five. We're back in a moment. And a game that feels like the first one to 100 wins. Alabama State leading 26 to 21. Yeah, we have really seen an offensive explosion here today. These teams averaging better than 10 yards per play. Very efficient. And Alabama State already scoring four touchdowns in the first half. Throwing it up. Pass intended for Lorenzo Hoffman, but just out of his outstretched arms as we get you back to Mike Hall at the U. 
Dave, not your everyday highlight. Miami against Wake. Miami's up. Wake has the ball. Handing off to wide receiver Nate Morton. And whoops, what happened? He's throwing the ball. Kid's got an arm to Chris Davis, who pops it in. And it's 14-10. Miami only up four points in the second. How about that? He must, be, he must be the backup quarterback. That was a great throw by a wide receiver. Tremendous throw. You know, Wake can surprise you. They, they, good coaching staff. We saw him beat Clemson earlier this year. Third down, five yards to go. See if Alabama State will be forced to punt for the first time today. And down goes Jackson. That's a covered sack there. And it will bring up a fourth down, and we'll see the punter for the first time today for the Hornets. I hope he's warmed up. He probably didn't think he was going to have to do anything today the way his <laughs> offense has been scoring. Good job by Mississippi State. I mean, it's Mississippi Valley State on the defensive end. Nobody's open. You can see he's looking all around, has to scramble, and eventually the rush gets to him. Big Shavin Johnson, 6'1", 305 from Jackson, Mississippi, is able to get the sack. Here's Anthony Johnson. You see averaging about 35, a long of 49. Waiting to get it is Cotton, standing back at his own 35. Cotton trying to get to the outside. He does. Flags all over the field. I count five. So after they sort out all the laundry, I assume this play is going to come back a little ways. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it was one right at the, the point of the catch to start off the return. But after that, a couple more flags also. This field is littered with yellow. Great move to the right, just a start and stop. And there you can see the hold, the takedown, yeah. clip, all in one. <laughs> really wasn't necessary because he had the guy beat with his initial move. But Cotton is an explosive wide receiver and kick returner. You can see he can make people miss. One, two, three, four, five flags. That's why there's this meeting of the minds with Charles Lewis, the referee. All right, what'd you get? I, I got holding. All right, I got clip. I got an illegal block in the back. Um, what do you have? I don't have anything. I've got a book, though. I'll write it all down for you. It's like a multiple choice. They can pick a penalty on this play. When you look at the high scoring game here, not like that at all at Alcorn State. They're already in the third quarter. Of course, they started about a half hour ahead of us. And A&M continues to hold a touchdown lead over Alcorn State. Again, the scenario is of Alabama A&M, two games remaining today and next week. If they win out, they will win we have a the Eastern foul, Division. Number 20 on the kicking team and an ejection. We have a personal foul, number 53 on the receiving team. That is an ejection. Then on the run back, we have a block in the back, number 49 on the receiving team. That penalty will be enforced from the spot of the foul. First down for Mississippi Valley. So a good explanation by Charles Lewis. Can't make Coach Totten very happy. One of his players ejected. Jay Peck ejected for Alabama State. And then the penalty that will be walked off goes against the Delta Devils. So Joe Pack, who is one of their leading returners, has been ejected from this game. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what these guys did. I mean, it has to be something extremely you know, difficult or violent, maybe some punches thrown or something like that to get ejected from a football game. Long bus ride home for Jay Peck. As you can see, he's trying to trying to explain to the coach exactly what happened. And also Julius Love, who's the backup middle linebacker, who, who does play quite a bit. I mean, he's a guy who has some, some tackles. Uh, that'll hurt Mississippi Valley State as well. No more love for the Delta Devils. They didn't have a lot of patience with him. <laughs> Out of Jacksonville, Florida, Country Day High School. So under six minutes to go here in this half. It's Mississippi Valley State after they sort it all out, getting the ball at their own 23-yard line, first and 10. Timmons in motion. And the pass is caught by Timmons. Boy, nice grab. He really went up in the air and brought it down at the 40. 
Aries Nelson, I mean, he really locks on to Timmons. This is his go-to guy. Ball is a little high. We saw Timmons have a circus catch for a touchdown earlier. He doesn't mind climbing the ladder and picking out those high passes and making the big play. May want to double team him at some point because he's definitely the go-to guy for Mississippi Valley. I think they are double teaming him some and maybe triple teaming. Here he comes in motion again, trying to probably get away from some of those double teams. And on the draw, not much doing. Calvin Woods really never could find a seam, and it's a good play by Chris Dupuy. Yeah, Dupuy, he's a New Orleans native, and he's a kid that actually lost a lot. His house was destroyed in the course of all of the flooding of Katrina. And last week, the team came together and raised $600 and gave to him and his family in support of everything they've been going through. Very good player on the field and a good person off the field also. Eddie, the man standing right to your right, Bill Hadley, our stage manager, is also an evacuee from New Orleans. He lost his home as well and has been living in Dallas ever since Hurricane Katrina. Good play here defensively. And we send you back to Mike Hall at the U. Guys, holy a peephole, Batman. Wake and Miami Deacons have first and goal. Chris Barkley on the option. Remember, the AP has Miami ahead of Alabama. Yet right now, Bama's up 10-0 on a top-five team, and Miami is losing to Wake. Dave? Oh, holy demon Deacons is right. Wow, how about that? Wake Forest surprising Miami. We saw Miami jump out of that early 14-3 lead, and it looked like they were going to put it on cruise control. Maybe they did. And you know, with all those computer polls, you don't have to actually lose a game to lose your spot, so that's tough. Third and 11. Nelson in and out of the hands of Clifford Carter. And Carter's dropped a couple of them here today, and that again was good enough for another first down, but good defense by the Hornets. I think that's why he throws to Tyrone Timmons all the yeah. time, because he's the guy who can make a catch in tough traffic. See, they're just running like a skinny post right here, and this is a tough catch. You can see the defender is right there, but you have to be able to bring that in. I mean, to come with the ball rake by Brandon Averett, who's a top defender, only a sophomore, but that's a catch that you want your receiver to make to move the chain, especially with this high power game. You don't want to have to punt in these types of situations. You want to give credit to the defense, but realistically there, that pass was dropped before the defense really even got there. You're exactly right. Another punt from Trey Butts. This will really back up all the way. Oh, not way. Let's see where they down it. I think it might have touched a Delta Devil at the three yard line. They're going to rule it down there, I believe, instead of saying it went all the way into the end zone. Al Vance Robinson was backpedaling, and now they're going to say it did go into the end zone. So let's get you back to Mike Hall at the U. Did a quick update of what's coming up at halftime. We'll go around to the top five teams. All of them are playing. Also, one of the top five personalities in sports is Steve Spurrier. He does it again. Another big time upset in a great story against Florida. Plus, top 25 teams going down. We'll explain. All right, thanks a lot, Mike. I don't know. They're not down yet. We'll see. So stay tuned. Mike and Steve and Tom all at the U at halftime. 421 till then. No game here. And a flag is down. Well, now they pick it up. No flag. And there it is again as Robinson just gets out of the way. Well, it looked like it might have hit the foot of yeah, number 21, Tommy Seawright from Mississippi yeah. Valley. And that's a, that's a big play because they could have had Alabama State pinned at the three-yard line, and instead they're out at the 20. Last play, a loss of one, second and 11. A flag does come in now. And a tremendous throw by Jackson. And another flag. So two flags on this play. Good throw and a catch by Brandon Horace. Wait a 
have to let the referee sort this one out there in conference. They're doing a lot of huddling today. Maybe they have a trick play up their sleeve or something. Hmm. I don't know. We have two fouls on the play, both against the offense. Illegal shift on the offense, number nine. That penalty is declined. Offensive pass interference, number two. That penalty will be enforced 15 yards from the previous spot. Replay second down. They'll actually take it half the distance to the goal since the ball was inside the 20. Not a 15-yard penalty, but still Charles Coe, head coach of the Hornets, not happy about that development. It looked like he was going to have the ball up near midfield. Now, instead, it's back inside the 10. And it brings up second down all over again. You know, in Alabama State, they started off extremely fast two weeks ago against Alabama A&M, 16-0. Alabama AM was able to work yourself back into the game and last week they started off slow so they haven't really put together a good four quarters of football all year long to we'll see if they can keep it going today second and 20 streaking down the field is Robinson and going with him stride for stride was Orthel Edwards pass was overthrown so third and 20 of course, Alabama State has a great 47% third down conversion percentage, but it's hard when it's third and 20 to convert. As far as Jackson dropping, dropping back, looking for Al Vance Robinson, his big player receiver, just overshot him a little bit, but it's over the safety head. I mean, the cornerback, he had a step or two on him, and the safety was not in position, so they may want to go back to that play later on in the game. The Hornets need the 30-yard line for a first down. They're going to run it. Here comes Williams. He'll be stopped shy of the first down marker as they bring him down at the 25 26 yard line. It'll bring up fourth down, fourth and four or five. And here comes the punting unit. And with still 2.45 remaining, clock is moving. Time for Mississippi Valley State to maybe get some more points. It'll depend a lot on Cotton. As he goes back to his own 40-yard line, waiting the kick of Anthony Johnson. He's a dangerous returner, and Alabama State has had problem, problems covering punts this year, so we'll see if he can make a big play. Off the side of the foot. Now it takes a huge bounce for Alabama State. And will finally be downed at the 31-yard line. A Sunday night ESPNU's coverage of college basketball continues with a Guardians Classic doubleheader live from Rupp Arena. First at 6 Eastern, the Lipscomb Bisons face the Northern Colorado Bears. Then at 8 Eastern, it's the South Dakota State Jackrabbits taking on the Kentucky Wildcats. The Guardians Classic on ESPNU Sunday night. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Well, first and 10 here for Mississippi Valley. They've got the ball at their own 31. Nelson decides to run for it. Stays in bounds. And now finally goes out of bounds up near midfield up to the 47. Nice run by Aries Nelson. And we'll run to the studio and Mike Hall. Down 17-14, guys. Miami strikes back. This is Kyle Wright looking for Sonoris Moss. They make it happen, and the extra point, however, was missed. So they're only up three, in case you're curious. The last time that Wake beat a top-five team was against Tennessee back in 1946, and right now they're down three. 1946, wow. How about that? All right, they'll continue to have updates on that game and others throughout the day, plus we will get you to the U for their halftime. You don't want to miss that. Nelson again. This time a rare drop by Timmons. So Timmons, who's already caught a couple of touchdowns today, a rare drop for him. With Eddie Robinson Jr., I'm Dave Armstrong. Glad to have you here at Rice Totten Stadium, the home of Mississippi Valley State. Watching an offensive shootout here. How about that other game of importance in the SWAC? Now tied between Alcorn State and Alabama A&M. And of course, if Alcorn State wins that game, it puts Alabama State back in the driver's seat. Yes, it does. And two years ago in 2003, it was the same situation. 
Alabama State lost to A&M late in the season and they went on to finish out their season and win the rest of their games and A&M dropped the game to Alcorn which let Alabama State slip into the SWAC championship game. We'll see if history can repeat itself once again two years later. Well the penalty backs the ball back up to the 36 yard line on a screen that goes nowhere. Shang Moore doesn't even get back to the original line of scrimmage and the clock winding down now inside 140. Of course you want to score and put more points on the board if you miss Mississippi Valley but at the same time you don't want to give the ball back to Alabama State because they've scored four touch or five touchdowns this half and they don't take they don't need a lot of time to score so you have to be smart in your play call you want to keep the clock running and what they're doing now is they're, they're slowing it down and trying to still work some clock but put some points on the board at the end of this second quarter. Yeah they really need some magic now though with second and 20 here. Nelson given time this time it is Timmons hanging on and he's close to a first down he's got it at the 43 yard line it looks like he's got enough for the first and boy Timmons how good has he been today and now you can run your two minute offense once you get that first down you are able to move the ball down the field a little bit and, and look at all the touchdowns he has I mean this guy just puts it in the end zone with the circuit catch deep ball he runs wide receiver screen he sets up another touchdown here getting down to the three yard line and got whacked too by Hogan another catch made this one by Cotton as he takes it inside the 20 now in field goal range it's at the 19 what a great name playing for Mississippi Valley State <laughs> you're right <laughs> he's in high cotton right now but good play here by Nelson. Yeah, he buys time. It's so hard to stop a quarterback who can run and throw. He can beat you with both of his assets. Clock winding down to 30. Only one timeout remaining for the Delta Devils. Up into the end zone. Touchdown! No, wait a minute. We're going to have a flag in the end zone. The pass ruled incomplete. Carter looked like he had it and then let the ball go. There is a flag, though, thrown on the play in the end zone. I think he may have caught it with just a slight push off, a little Michael Irvin, just a shove right before I catch the ball. Great throw by Aries Nelson coming right to you. You can't really see the push off. He's already extended. But I think that's what the flag is going to be on with Carter with the push Pass off. Pass interference on the defense. No, on the defense. Four. No, moved it on the defense. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Jimmy Toussaint was whistled for the defensive pass interference. And again, they'll go half the distance to the goal here from the original, the other spot, which was the 19. So they should move it down to the 10. No, they marked it down to the four yard line. Wow, that's a big penalty. That is. So I think it was more Toussaint holding on than a shove. That's the way the referee looked at it, and of course he has the final say. First and goal from the four with 22 seconds remaining. Now do you run another play, call a timeout? They're going to call the timeout here. As Haggett, who has a rushing touchdown today, has stopped at the one. Well, you got a couple of cracks at it if you throw the ball. You can't, though, really run the ball now unless you're sure you're going to get into the end zone. Right, they still have one timeout left with 14.4 seconds. You definitely don't want to waste all your time running. With a quarterback like Aries Nelson, I would think you would pick it up and maybe throw it once or twice. But they've been effective earlier on the drive, finishing off runs with a powerful running game while they were at the one-yard line. So they can also have that option to try to just use the power running attack and slam it in there. You're right. They do have one left. I got deked by the scoreboard they had one previous to that timeout so I thought that was their last one but they do have one more timeout remaining that puts the run play back into the playbook and with all of these points scored it's, it's understandable to see why the scoreboard operator may have the timeouts left yeah. messed up because he's been busy today I and mean, we have a lot of touchdowns scored already in this first half I don't know what they're going to do for an encore going into the third and fourth quarter so one timeout remaining for the Delta Devils the ball at the one, second and goal, 14 seconds remaining. On the quarterback keeper, Nelson is into the end zone. They're fighting for the ball. 
might have come loose, but a touchdown was signaled by one of the line judges, and it is a touchdown. Once the hands goes up by the line judge, it really doesn't matter what happened. He can lose the ball or whatever, but he only needed inches to get in there. So as soon as he extended it across the invisible plane, it's a touchdown. Everything else is academic. Here is Nelson able to jump up over the pile, shove the ball across the plane, and how about that? Mississippi Valley State has come back, and they'll have the halftime lead most likely. Most likely is right because these teams have been scoring <laughs> points all kinds of ways. Yeah, I added that at the very end thinking, well, there's 12 seconds to go. Wise choice. And the extra point is good. It gives Mississippi Valley State a two-point advantage here in the first half. Of course, this touchdown set up by the defensive penalty in Alabama State, but yeah, he just stretches that ball right across. He does lose it, but hey, the play is over. It's already a touchdown. Good job by Aries just finding the soft spot because it looked like he wanted to go left at first, and I guess he, he felt the opening to the right side and was able just to stretch and get that ball across the uh, end zone. Nelson, who has been with Coach Totten for a long time, hasn't he? Yeah, great story. I mean, Coach Totten actually coached him all four years in high school. Nelson then signed with Mississippi State because Jackie Sherrill was the coach and came and personally recruited him, and then Jackie Sherrill left and Sylvester Kroon came. He went through all of the spring practice with Coach Kroon and wasn't able to win the starting job. And two weeks before the 2004 season, he transfers back to Mississippi Valley State and starts the opening day. You hope they get along, huh? Because they've been together for long enough. When I asked him about that, I said, when you're with a coach that long, sometimes, you know, coaches have the same speeches and everything when you have a big loss or a tough yeah. win. And he says he knows just about all of those speeches by heart now. Line drive kick. And downed at the 36-yard line. With four seconds remaining, it wouldn't surprise me if Alabama State went up top trying to get a score here before this half comes to a close. Aries Nelson is a kid. He's just getting better. I mean, he didn't really have a chance to go through a spring or a, a preseason last year. He came two weeks before the season started. So he was just going on natural ability. Now he really has a, a good feel for the game plan. He's able to check off and change plays at the line of scrimmage. And look for him to be one of the top returning players in the swag next year. Of course, he's third ranked in most of the offensive categories behind Bruce Eugene and Tavares Jackson. So next year, he'll be probably the preseason all swag quarterback and is looking to have a big year and also a big half in this third and fourth quarter. No kidding. So what should be, unless we see a penalty, the last play of this first half, it is Williams taking it into the pile, and that will do it. The first half comes to a close. A lead of 26 to 14 once upon a time for the Hornets goes away as the Delta Devils come back and take a halftime lead of 28-26. And now let's go back to Mike Hall at our ESPNU studio. coming up right after this. It's about a big receivers. That touchdown by Williams gave him a 26-14 lead, but then look out, Devils. And they were able to each team with four touchdowns in that first half, total offense, both these teams, one over 300, the other one nearing it, almost 600, over 600 yards of total offense, and an average per play of almost 10 yards per play. Unbelievable. Eight touchdowns in that first half, and the two quarterbacks, you would expect, they had good first halves, and they did. And no interceptions. I mean, both of these guys have had real efficient days, and especially Tavares Jackson, 8 of 11, three touchdowns. But Nelson is no slouch. He's 10 of 19 with also two touchdowns and no interceptions, no turnovers. The defense, both defenses at some point are going to have to stand up and make a play, create a turnover, or do something to change, change the momentum in this game because the offenses are really having their way with each other. And on top of that great first half of offense, we saw a tremendous presentation at halftime of the Mean Green marching music machine as they take their seats here in the stands. Great marching band here at Mississippi Valley State. They're called the Mac of the Swack. How about the receivers in this game? Look at Robinson and Timmons. 
each with two touchdowns, and Timmons has averaged 28 yards per catch. Of course, one of them, one of those touchdowns for him went 50 yards. It always helps your average when you have a long ball to throw in there and, and boost it up. So here comes Alabama State on offense for the first time. Each team with two punts in the first half and four touchdowns each. And the give here is to Robert Randolph. He runs into that pile and gains a couple on first down. Excuse me, that's Keldrick Williams running. And Dave, one thing that's also important with the, is the time of possession. Alabama State, as we saw at the halftime stats, had 18 minutes um, time of possession. So, I mean, it's, they're still running the ball. Mississippi Valley is scoring with big plays, and they're throwing. I mean, they're running on occasion. But Alabama State, I think they still see the importance of having a balanced attack and getting some runs and controlling the clock. Eddie, you saw Charles Coe there on the sideline. He has to be feeling a little bit like he allowed Mississippi Valley State, not he personally, but their team, allowed them back in this game. Nice uh, catch by Chris Maddox over on the sideline. He goes out of bounds right at midfield. I mean, because once upon a time in this game, the Hornets led by the score of 26 to 14, but they really let the Delta Devils off the hook. Yeah, and when you have a two touchdown lead, you feel like one more touchdown. If we can extend it to a three touchdown lead, then we can just about put them out of their misery. But give Mississippi Valley State credit. I mean, they, those guys have come and fought back. Their defense has made some plays, and the offense is still scoring. Now, Charles Cole, who played at Kansas State University back in the early 70s, was actually a better baseball player than a football player and was drafted in the first round by the Detroit Tigers. Played a couple of years in the Tigers organization. Here it's Keldrick Williams going down to the 45, a gain of five, second and five. And Coach Coleman, he's been around the coaching ranks. He coached with Johnny Majors at Pitt and also University of Tennessee. So he just started off with a, with a real uh, good first three years here at Alabama State and getting into the championship game those, both of those first two years and winning the SWAC conference last year for the first time in Alabama State's history, so actually since 1991, quite some time ago. How about that? And in 71 is when he was drafted in the first round by the Tigers, the Detroit Tigers, that is. Second and five on the option. A little pitch to Williams, and he's only able to get a couple of yards. It'll be third and three. Yeah, he run, runs into Jared Prout and those linebackers once again, and they're having their hands full. I mean, as Alabama State scored four touchdowns in the first half, but they play some good defense here. Those guys have a lot of sacks and they're making big plays. They just have to get one big play to get their offense to ball back, and this, this can be decided either who has the ball last or which defense can make a big play at some point, create a turnover, and do something to give their offense a short field here. Yeah, no turnovers in that first half. Nobody fumbled, nobody threw an interception. The deep pitch here is to Williams, and he was stopped well behind the line of scrimmage. There's that big play defensively you were looking for from the Delta Devils. Yeah, tackles for loss. Guys are getting penetration and not letting him get to the outside. Of course, Keldrick has a lot of speed. If he gets to the corner, he can be extremely dangerous. There you can see guys just getting up field. Number 44, Tyler Knight chasing the play down getting run support with Chris Wilson and just all of the Delta Devils just gang tackling and not giving Keldrick Williams a chance to get started with that speed. There's Cotton again back at his own 15 yard line awaiting the punt of Anthony Johnson. This is three possessions in a row now for Alabama State where they had to bring out the punting unit. They scored the first four times they had the ball. Oh, this is going to really work out to Alabama State's advantage. That ball originally bounced at the 15 and will be downed at the three. Yeah, a mental mistake by Clarence Cotton. He has to come up and fair catch that ball. He cost his offense almost 15 or 20 yards of field position, like you pointed out. So Aries Nelson, who had a very good first half, will go on the attack for the first time in the second half. 11-28 remaining here in the third quarter. Isn't that a great shot? Uh, sun setting here in the Delta of Mississippi. And it's Mississippi Valley State taking on Alabama State. These offenses certainly haven't set. These two teams are putting up points in bunches. And now it's the Delta Devils coming on the attack for the first time, but starting in the shadow of their own end zone. As a flag comes in, might have a hold here and a short gain on the play for the Delta Devils. 
Yeah, and that's the call, holding versus Mississippi Valley, which isn't that bad of a penalty. Backs him up half the distance, only about a yard or two. Holding offense, number 60. Half the distance to the goal. Repeat, second down. One of the shorter penalties of the game, a yard and a half, but not what Willie Totten wanted. He wants to get out of the shadow of that end zone. As we talked at halftime, Mississippi Valley State, I mean, fortunate to have a two-point lead, I guess you can say Alabama State has seemed to move up and down the field, but they still find themselves down by two. And they've gotten caught, though, in the quagmire their last three series. And it's Joey Haggett taking it only up to the four, trying to give Mississippi Valley State a little bit of breathing room. And the one knock on Alabama State this year is their inconsistency. They'll have stretches when their offense looks dynamic, I and mean, they'll go three and four possessions in a row where you can't stop them and then they'll go three and out and have to punt for three or four times. There's a lot of up and downs in that offense. Second and nine, short nine. And outside the five now, they get it up to the eight yard line. Let's update you on that other game and Alabama A&M now is pulled ahead with two straight touchdowns against Alcorn State. Important for A&M to keep a look at the SWAC standings. If Alabama A&M wins out because they already have a victory over Alabama State, it'll be Alabama A&M and Grambling playing for the SWAC championship. Yes, and Alabama State is really on the outside looking in. I mean, they have to win today to give themselves a chance and hope that A&M can lose one of their final two games. Third and five, Nelson. I thought he was throwing it away, but no, he finds Timmons. What a pass by Aries Nelson. It looked like that ball was going to sail all the way to the warning track. Didn't you think he was throwing this one away? Yeah, it didn't look like he had a chance to get that ball in bounds. And you can see he just flails it up there in the air and great pressure and right on target. His main guy, Mr. Timmons, who's been Mr. Everything for Mississippi Valley today. Eddie, have you been have you been surprised at how open Timmons has been in a lot of these plays? At some point, you have to double cover the guy. I mean, he's the only guy that's making plays and, and seems to get touchdowns for Mississippi Valley State today. Here comes Haggett, and there he goes. Not much gain at all. Gain of only one. Good tackle by Demetrius Derrico there. Playing this rover position, he's up at the line of scrimmage, kind of like the extra guy who can't really be blocked and did a good job of just stuffing that run and not letting the runner get any extra yards. You see Derrick O' fine year he's having in his sophomore campaign out of Montgomery, Alabama. Demetrius Derrick O'. No gain, so we'll call it second and ten. Nelson. Scrambling again, got a flag thrown as down goes Nelson. A good play in the backfield by John Hogan. Hogan was the one that laid a lick on Timmons earlier. And again, we'll see what the flag is about, probably another hole. The Alabama State came with the blitz, so Dupuy, one of the linebackers. The is declined, result of the play, third down. So instead of taking the half the distance to the goal penalty, they went ahead and took the down and the sack. So now third down for Willie Totten. And it's third and long. Yeah, it's hard hey. to get those sacks. You don't want to take those sacks away from those linebackers, man. That's tough. <laughs> they got to get to the 34-yard line. is broken up. Good play by Jimmy Toussaint. There's the pass intended for Shang Moore. And on that third and long, we saw Alabama State come out with their speed defense. Usually they've come with a 4-3 alignment, basic defensive front that most teams use, but in certain situations when they're really expecting pass four wide receivers, they go to a 4-1, but they only have one linebacker in the game with six defensive backs. And Dupuy is the one guy who stays in the game at middle linebacker, something they use a lot last week um, to stop uh, Grambling State's offense. Tony Pierce had a great conversation with him the other day. He has a, an organization, a website, if you will, 
Jot this down. It's called fathersintouch.org. He said he had a player come to him a couple of years ago, literally in tears, came from a single parent home. And he said, I just felt like we needed to do something more. So he started this organization called Fathers in Touch. So it's fathersintouch.org. And it's a way really for him to give back and to try to instill some sort of ethics and morals within you know the society and he's and you just got to go to the website to figure out what it's about Bobby Bowden the head coach at Florida State has endorsed it Lute Olson the head basketball coach at Arizona has endorsed it and uh, it just continues to grow in popularity yeah, it's really trying to reunite um, single parent kids who come up in a single parent household with their dad who may not be involved in their life at some point so with 8.24 remaining here in the third quarter, here comes Alabama State. A fingertip non-grab by Alvance Robinson. I mean, he had it right in his fingertips, and he couldn't quite hang on. He's been running that post play a couple times today. He's going to catch it sooner or later. There's not a deep safety there for Mississippi Valley State. As you can see, they're coming with the pressure. He has two steps on the cornerback. Tavares Jackson lays it out there just a little too long as he stretches out and tries to catch that pass. Easy for me to say from here, but if he'd have laid out and dove for that ball, he probably comes up with a catch. But I think he wanted to do more than that. I think he was looking catch and end zone. He's looking at the end zone, but you're right. If he could have just dived for the ball, he may have had a chance to catch it. Well, second and ten now after the incompletion. And from the option, here comes Randolph. And he pulls his way across midfield and down to the 47 yard line. It'll bring up third and short. That's the second time we've seen that play. I mean, it's a good play because it, it puts instant pressure on the defense. You can see it's just a speed option where the quarterback options off the end man. He doesn't have to block him. And once you get the fast guy, the big guy on the edge, I mean, he's downhill. And that's not a pretty sight. See big Randolph coming downhill at your big number 44. Well, he's out there now. And when you look at big guys, Ronald Green is one of those, a six foot 300 pounder, third and one. Randolph picking his spot goes across the right side of the line and enough for the first down to the 45. And Alabama State is coming back with their running game trying to settle down the scoring and all of the wildness in this game and, and still put points on the board but they're doing a good job of controlling the clock and not getting into an all-out shootout with Mississippi Valley State. It's hard not to call it a shootout when you've had eight touchdowns scored in the first half but you still have to have a running game and control the clock and have time of possession as a factor also. Randolph you see almost seven yards per carry today. He and Williams have been quite a one-two punch in that backfield for the Hornets. First and ten from the 45. Jackson all day to throw it and wide open. How did he get that open? Al Vance Robinson streaks down the sideline. You see the Alabama State offense. They're quiet for a couple series and all of a sudden they score with a big play quick. A couple plays in the running game and all of a sudden Al Vance Robinson from long range. He's in the end zone once again. It's almost like he came off the sideline. He was so open. <laughs> it's like the Delta Devils didn't even know he was in the game. Well, you have to know he's in the game. I mean, he's the leading receiver for right. Alabama State and the main guy. So you have to put coverage on him. He threw. A, he had a lot of double team coverage on him last week when they played Grambling, and he was slowed down just a little. But today, as you can see, third touchdown reception. He's on fire. Totten is upset. He thinks that should have been a penalty against Alabama State. He's complaining about the reason that Al Vance Robinson was so wide open. A deception play on the part of the Hornets. And Totten is screaming at referee Charles Lewis. Not happy at all with the play. But it's Alabama State forging back in front. 33-28. During the timeout, Willie Totten really gave the officials an earful, saying the same thing happened to his team last week. Somehow, Al Vance Robinson, coming in motion, got wide open, and it very well could have been some sort of a pick, an illegal pick, perhaps, on the part of Alabama State that freed Al Vance Robinson. 
We'll look at it again after this kick. Oh man, one step away from breaking out of the woods was Calvin Woods, but a good return nonetheless as he gets it close to the 30 yard line. You can see the spot shadow on Al Vance Robinson. He usually draws a lot of attention when he goes across in motion like that. I think it was just a situation he ran an out and up with the pump fake and the linebacker dropped. And that's the case where you have the second man through the zone. And what I mean by that is the first wide receiver ran deep and took the cornerback out of the play. So Al Vance Robinson was the second guy who followed the deeper guy and the linebacker just didn't continue the coverage. So I don't, I didn't see anything for Coach Totten to be upset about. Yeah, really, except maybe with his own defense for letting Al Vance Robinson get so wide open. Pass is caught here by Calvin Woods as we get you back to the studio and Mike Hall. Mike. Guys, we got Alabama and LSU. LSU driving fourth and inches. It's 10 nothing in the third. They're going for it. Justin Vincent. You know, I just I agree with the decision and I also agree with the call. The way that offensive line has played this entire series, getting great drive off the ball. Great call. You gotta love that linebacker flying over. Les Miles is happy, Dave. I should say so. Les Miles with a gutsy call there for LSU, and they're back within a field goal. Good stuff. Nelson's going to run for it. He's got some room, and then slides down, does a pop-up slide at the 45. You know, when I talked to Aries Nelson this week to say, who do you like? Michael Vick, Donovan McNabb, Steve McNair. Who do you kind of pattern yourself after? But he actually said Steve McNair because he doesn't see himself as just a pure runner. I mean, he's effective and he can run. But as you can see right there, he runs when he has to out of necessity. For the most part, he tries to buy time in the package, in the pocket, and still throw the ball down the field and beat the defense that way. Eddie, he would classify himself as a pass first quarterback. Exactly. Not, not a run first now, He's not a Michael Vick. When that fifth step touches from Michael Vick, he's ready to run. Yeah, he is. The give is to Walter Burnett, the fullback, and he pulls his way across midfield. Man. Burnett, 6'3", 240. And that's a first down. Delta Devils taking a page out of the Alabama State book, trying to control the clock just a little, realizing that they can't just pass every play, so they're you know, doing a good job of mixing in some runs and being effective that way. Even though it's a shootout, you still have to control the clock and, and have some threat of a running game. First and ten for the Devils. Inside now, Hornet territory. Ball at the 48-yard line. That's Carter in motion. And the pass is to Carter. He's got the first down and more as he gets it down to the 32-yard line. Now you see that motion guy that always seems to come across the field from Mississippi Valley State. They're trying to see if it's man or zone. And you can see it was man coverage that time. Clifford Carter did a good job of running the switch route at the bottom of the field and getting open. And usually that's Tyrone Timmons that runs that route. And so you can see maybe it's just that position that is always open that Alabama State is having trouble to stop, having trouble stopping today. So at the 32-yard line, another first down. Seesaw battle between these two teams here today. Low snap. Nelson picks it up looking for Timmons. I thought he was going to come up with that, but he could not. Certainly coming up with great highlights today is our own Mike Hall. Mike? Oh, you're the best, Dave. Let's get some more with Tommy Lugs, USC, and Cal. It's third and ten. Leinart's going to go to pass. And then there's nothing there. Great secondary, so he's going to run, but he doesn't cross that line, Tommy. That's exactly right. People say he can't buy second chances with his legs. Look at him. Keep his eyes downfield. Find Lendo White for the big gain down to the five. And this USC team, 28-3 to in the third, Dave and Eddie. It looks a lot like we're setting up for USC and Texas. You want to just play it next week? That should be a great matchup. Cut to the chase. I know there's some other teams like Alabama and others that have a lot to say about that but boy USC and Texas looks like they have really separated themselves from the pack like the snap ball start offense number 72 five yard penalty still second down you can't really blame the offensive lineman for a false start I mean they're so they're so much in a hurry to get this offense going yeah, he's just trying to get out there just a just a little bit quick, just a hair quick, trying to get that pass rush. I mean, these defensive ends are so fast today. Kerry Frazier and these guys up front for Alabama State. You need every advantage to try to get a hand on these little fast guys. Six 
second and 15. Nelson somehow avoids the sack and then does a good job just to get rid of that ball. Thank you. Way after marching right down the field. Remember this drive started at their own three yard line. Now all of a sudden the last couple of plays have back the Delta Devils up and now they're facing a third and 15. Shouldn't be a problem for Mississippi Valley State. They've been able to do everything else today offensively and they sure have. In this type of game third and 15 is, is not out of the realm of possibility. It's something that you can convert and get a first down. And really where they're at on the field it might be four down territory. I would think so. I mean the, the way these possessions are precious you have to score just about every time you touch the ball to stay in this ball game today. Look for Timmons. There he goes in motion. Nelson going to run for it. Wow, does he dance to a first down? Amazing run for Aries Nelson. He says he's not a running quarterback, but on that play there, I would have to beg to differ. He can run and be really effective running the ball when he has to. Look at these moves. Good coverage by Alabama State. And this one makes it so hard to stop a running quarterback. I mean, look at these moves. He's almost like a running back now that he's in the open field. And that was a third and 15, and he was able to get that first down. You have everybody covered. You do a great job defensively. Then the quarterback takes off and makes three or four people miss a tackle, and it's a first down. That's extremely hard to defend defensively. Looks like it's Jamal Johnson. It is Jamal Johnson, the senior out of Phoenix City, Alabama. Who is slow in getting up? Johnson being helped off the field. And Jamal Johnson, he, they've had a couple injuries along that defensive front. Guys have been banged up all year long. Charles Parham, number 96, missed a couple of games, and now he's back playing this week. So they can ill afford to lose any of those defensive linemen going down the stretch. We look at the numbers for Nelson today. Look at that 13 of 25 for almost 250 yards, a couple of touchdowns, plus tack on 34 more on the ground. And a big run on that last play to give him a first down when it was third and 15. So now at the 19, first down. Timmons again in motion. Give again to the big fullback, Walter Burnett. And he takes it inside the 15 down to the 14 yard line. Well, the Delta Devils uh, taking a breather, I guess. It's too much offense in one day. Long day, he's tired of doing the push ups after the touchdowns. He's worn out. <laughs> it's like, come here. Now, look, if they score again, I got to do how many? <laughs> That little devil. Going up into the end zone. Cotton! No! Broken up at the last second. That's number 25, Brandon Averett. And you can see he gets a, a lot of attention because he's a 5'7", 160-pound sophomore out of Phoenix City, Alabama. So short cornerback by today's standards. So that's why you keep seeing Mississippi Valley State trying to throw the jump ball. One time they tried it with Timmons, and now they're trying it again. But he's holding his own. He's making plays, able to fight and get that ball out and get his head around and incomplete pass. Great job by the defender. Really was. Third and six. Mississippi Valley State needs the eight yard line for a first down. Nelson. Watch out. Cut back. He's got room to run. Looking for the end zone. Nelson will be stopped at the one. Wow, man, John Hogan. <laughs> he can put a lick on you, Hogan. And look at Nelson getting up smiling. Hey, where did he come from? <laughs> I mean, it seemed like from up here, he would score that touchdown easily, walking into the end zone. I mean, John Hogan, give him credit for running down the play and putting a lick on the quarterback once again. Great job by Nelson, realizing that the containment was outside, and Hogan, just a missile, just launches his body. <laughs> oh, man. Now, now Timmons and Nelson can compare Hogan hits today. <laughs> they have both been drilled by him. So now first and goal, the ball at the one-yard line.
stood up at the two yard line. No gain here for Haggett. Thirty three twenty eight our score clock winding down in the third quarter. We come to you today from Edabina, Mississippi Rice Totten Stadium. He's Eddie Robinson Jr. I'm Dave Armstrong. We have been watching all kinds of offense and it continues here in the third quarter. And these teams have amassed over 700 yards now in offense today. Second and goal from the two. When they're going backward this time it's Burnett chopped down and again that's Hogan John Hogan when he hits you you go nowhere and he's a 5'9 linebacker and they say he's really a middle linebacker who plays outside linebacker but the kid is tough as nails I've seen him play on numerous occasions he gets big hits in every game and here he's had two already kind of reminds you of a Sam Mills or a London Fletcher one of those undersized linebackers but the good thing he's compact he's already in the hidden position and he's under everybody's pads because he's only 5'9 <laughs> he's a tough kid it was first and goal at the one now it's third and goal at the five Nelson and he's not going to make it that play was stopped right at the line by guess who John Hogan three straight running plays by Mississippi Valley State once they got the first and goal I mean they're only at the two yard line you would think with all of the high power throws that Aries Nelson has that they would give him an opportunity to pass it at least once but they've been successful early on in their their goal line running this Hogan sees something and John Hogan able to make the stop I mean, you can see he wraps up pitcher perfect puts his helmet right in the middle of the runner he doesn't miss many tackles Blanco got it oh, man. I don't know how that got over the crossbar Looked like it was tipped at the yeah. line of scrimmage just a little it was barely squeaked over and it gets Mississippi Valley State three points closer. And it's the point in the broadcast where we like to say hi to Uncle Neil. <laughs> no, he's not my uncle. But anyway, he walked there once upon a time. One small step. And at halftime today, a big step for Willie Totten as he is officially inducted into the College Hall of Fame and recognition day today. They were going to recognize him on the 24th of September, but it was pushed back to today because of the after effects of Hurricane Katrina. When you look at that College Football Hall of Fame, it is absolutely littered with people from the SWAC position, and Willie Totten deservedly so goes into the College Football Hall of Fame. He, he is a part of this class of 2005. Jerry Rice will join him shortly. Rice has to wait five years after the time of his retirement. But you know Jerry, his running mate in that satellite offense back in the early 80s, will be joining him soon. Almost a fumble on the return, but Alabama State was able to hang on to the ball, and they'll restart their offense at the 25. Well, let's give you a final score now from the SWAC and Alabama A&M. They win today to keep their hopes alive of taking on Grambling State in the SWAC championship. Now they're one step closer. and Of course, their final game of the year is against Prairie View A&M. So if Alabama State was to pull this game out today, then A&M would be forced to have to beat Prairie View A&M to actually represent the Eastern Division in the conference championship game. Jackson. Wide open at the 32 yard line is Robinson. No, excuse me, Maddox. So Chris Maddox with the catch. And a big gain on first down. I'm sure with a two point lead with a whole quarter to go, the Alabama State coaches are thinking we definitely need to score more points with all of the excitement and touchdowns that have been going on today. So they're going to still be aggressive and try to put more points on the board now. I don't think they're going to get another play here, though, in the third quarter as the clock winds down the end of the third quarter. Both these teams still cheering loudly and cheering for an offensive, offensive game. 33-31 as we head to the fourth quarter. Yeah. These are the mini pearl version of the uh, Delta Devil horns. They leave the price tag on it. 
You know, just just purchased him at the concession stand. Hey, but it got you on TV. As we start the fourth quarter of play, it's Alabama State 33 and the Delta Devils 31. Well, let's get you to Mike Hall with an update. Mike, what's going on out there? Oh, there's plenty going on right now. We're going to update a game we haven't seen much of. This is Virginia and Georgia Tech down seven. Reggie Ball, 25 yards. Demarius, back in. 17 all. Meanwhile, LSU has hit a field goal, so they are back in this game. It's a brand new one. Five minutes left in the third. 10 all LSU and Bama, Dave. How about that? Alabama loses today. And boy, we're whittling down the unbeatens, aren't we? LSU with a nice comeback, trailing 10 0 in that game. And they come back to tie it. Here, Randolph running hard. He'll have enough for the first down and then some as he gets it up to the 38 yard line. They'll move the chains. Alabama State converting on third down. And they're ranked high in that category, 41% on the 47% on the year, excuse me. And right now they just want to control this clock. I mean, Aries Nelson is scoring every time he touches the ball, so you don't want him back on the field. Eddie, realistically, I mean, with Randolph running, if it's third and short, I don't see how you stop him. Now, he's a big guy. Third and less than a yard, he's almost impossible to stop him. He moves the pile every time he touches the ball. And good forward body lean. He doesn't get knocked back pretty often. You know, we've got a flag thrown in from the backfield. 12 people on the field. Yep. It's 54 tries to sneak off. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Jerry Morris was out there when he shouldn't have been. You get an earful from the coach on that one, especially this late in the year. You shouldn't have those substitution errors. What are you doing out there, young man? That's well, first and five now. And boy, was he separated from the ball. Al Vance Robinson had it, and Chris Wilson really laid a lick on him. Yeah, that was a big lick by Chris Wilson, number 22, but Al Vance has got to handle that ball. I mean, he has two hands on the ball. It's a tough catch. You know you're going to get hit in that situation, running that skinny post. He just couldn't make the catch. Chris Wilson, give him credit. I mean, from Memphis, Tennessee, Warren High School, he went through the receiver, knocked the ball out of his hand with a punishing lick. Is a skinny post like a skinny latte? <laughs> Second and five. Jackson. Nope. That play went nowhere right from the outset. A loss of six. Ronald Green was the first one there. And now getting slow, oh, slow to get up is Baron Pullum. Pullum says, I'm all right. This is the play where they just fake the handoff to Randolph. It's almost like a, a naked run by the quarterback. He doesn't have any blocking over there. He fooled Mississippi Valley State early on a couple times in the game in the first and second quarter. They've made the adjustment at halftime, and they're playing safe and playing at home, and we're able to bring them down for a loss on the play. Well, it was first and five, now third and 11. The blitz. And coming on the blitz is Tyler Knight. Good night, Mr. Jackson. Great call by defense coordinator Washington. Coach Washington from Mississippi Valley State. He likes to blitz his linebackers. They're first and second in the conference in sacks, and that's why. Tavares Jackson fortunate just to hang on to that ball as Tyler Knight is coming in for his eight and a half sack another sack and he was second in the conference in sacks of course Jared Prout the middle linebacker is first in the conference in sacks so both linebackers able to get a lot of pressure in blitzing the quarterback well, did you see Tyler Knight I mean came in untouched and when he got a few yards from the quarterback you could just see him salivating like oh I'm gonna get him that's and a great feel good yeah <laughs> Now that's a short punt here and excellent field position now for Mississippi Valley State. It looked like once upon a time for Alabama State when it was first and five, it was going to be an easy first down. They backed up and then the big sack. So the Delta Devils will come back on the attack next. Well, Alabama State leads by two right now. The lead could have been four, should have been four, but Anthony Johnson missed a couple of extra points. 
Yeah, crucial extra points and going down the stretch, that's one of those things you know it's going to affect the outcome in the game towards the end. He also missed two extra points in the loss to Alabama A&M, so he's had his troubles. However, he's 10 for 10 on field goals, so maybe he needs to back up a little on those extra points and then he can make them. Amazing. So Anthony Johnson, uh, and the way, the reason it's really important at this juncture of the game, a 12-05 to go, now Mississippi Valley State, you know, they just need a field goal here. If those two extra points are good, they would need a touchdown. And that can really come back to haunt the Alabama State Hornets going down the stretch. Now here is Nelson working from the shotgun, first and 10. Ball at their own 32-yard line. Nelson given all day, I mean all day. Early contact, nope, incomplete pass. Shang Moore is begging for the flag. That's a good break on the ball by Jimmy Toussaint on that play. Guy from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I mean, but like you said, Aries Nelson's is back there making a the piece. I mean, nobody's even close to him. At some point, you're going to have to blitz or send some pressure. You can't just let a guy that talented sit up there and give him that much time to throw the ball. Real close. I think it's a no call. Yep. Second and ten. Nelson's hoping to get that kind of protection the rest of the game. He's got it again here. Now he's scrambling a little bit. And there's Timmons. Timmons dances around one tackle and takes it all the way down to the 40-yard line. Tyrone Timmons comes through again. Yeah, Timmons has been the big play guy. He has a couple of touchdowns on the day and seemed like every time Aries Nelson scrambles or needs to hit a receiver. He always seems to break free. You can see here he just runs a whip route. And that's tough on the defender because the play has taken so long to develop. Oh, and now a holding call is going to bring it all back. Erase what you just saw from your memory banks. And Willie Totten is saying, oh, man, we had it down to the 40. But a holding call against the Delta Devils will negate a huge play here and back them all the way up to the 22-yard line. It seemed like a late flag on the play. That may be why Coach Totten is so upset also. That flag came in very late. Well, now it's second and 20. So back to the drawing board for Timmons at all. Tyrone Timmons with eight catches today, almost 200 yards. Closing in on a thousand yards for the year. Nelson bouncing around like a pinball is brought down after a gain of just one as we get you back to my call at the U. Hey Dave, interesting storyline developing here. Texas KU, it's an ugly game, but look who's still in the game. Raymond Taylor gets the ball, and who gives it to him, Tom? Vince Young. Two things, guys. The BCS and the Heisman Trophy. Trying to get him. Well, the backup is finally now in, but Dave, here's the stat of the day as the score is ugly. Before that Kansas score, it was 152 straight unanswered points for Texas over their last three games. Boy, amazing. You know, Texas is just a juggernaut right now. A lot of people thought they might have a little bit of a letdown after the Texas Tech game. They haven't let down at all. Baylor last week and then Kansas this week. Nelson facing a third and 19 is going to run for it. Stays in bounds is hit at the 38 yard line shy of the first down. It'll bring up a fourth and four. Boy, it was Kerry Frazier who put a lick on him and shy of the first down. And Kerry Frazier is a defensive end, so he's pass rushing, and then he's just showing a, a lot of hustle and determination. I mean, he's one of those guys who just keeps his motor running. He's a high motor guy, leads the team with four and a half sacks, but give Aries Nelson the credit for getting out of trouble and almost getting that first down. And Nelson holding that left leg just a little bit. He limped off the field. And now a fourth down situation here. So back goes Al Vance Robinson back at his own 20 yard line. Now we've got a whistle and a timeout. So we're going to take it with them. 952 remaining. And right now it's Alabama State clinging to a two point lead. 
Well, we saw Aries Nelson limp off the field, and that created a bit of a panic on the sideline for the Delta Devils. Tyrone Timmons, their talented wide receiver, is actually their backup quarterback as well, so he has been spending some time getting loose just in case. The question then remains, who does he throw to? Himself? That's a tough question because he's definitely a big play wide receiver. He needs to clone himself, I guess. Here comes the punt, and it's a good one. Taken by Robinson, dancing around, stays on his feet up across the 25 to the 27-yard line. And now Alabama State with a chance to perhaps put this game away a little bit with 9.38 remaining. Hey, Sunday night ESPN News coverage of college basketball continues with the Guardians Classic doubleheader live from Rupp Arena. First at 6, the Lipscomb Bear. I'm, I'm not going to get that right. Lipscomb. There we go. The Bisons face on the Northern Colorado Bears. Then at 8 Eastern, the South Dakota State Jackrabbits take on the Kentucky Wildcats. Guardians Classic on ESPNU Sunday night. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Jackrabbits never have fun against Wildcats, do they? Yeah, Bisons and the Bears. Yeah. Good matchup. Oh, my. Well, hanging on and staying on his feet as long as he could was Keldrick Williams. A good gain on first down. He takes it up to the 31-yard line. Alabama State, their mission here is to run as much clock as they can if they can score a touchdown. And that puts Mississippi Valley State then a couple of scores down in this game and time running thin. Right, and not knowing the health issues that Aries Nelson may have, this would be a real big possession for Alabama State to not just run some clock but try to put some points on the board Absolutely. also. Man, ripped down from behind is Keldrick Williams. Tyler Knight held on and, and whipped him back around. No gain there, and it's going to bring up third and seven. There you can see those linebackers on the first play. It was Clayton McDonald who made the stop, and now it's number 44, Tyler Knight, who leads the conference in tackling. Outside linebacker, very aggressive, fast guys. I mean, these linebackers are all over the field. Prout, Knight, and McDonald. You also see Julius Love in that mix, but he was kicked out of the game in the first half. When you look at the rushing offense, in the six wins, they average 223 almost. In the three losses, only 114. They're between those numbers here today. Somehow Jackson got rid of that ball, and also it wasn't picked off as Prout was draped all over him. Yeah, bringing the blitz once again. Coach Washington told us that he would blitz as many times as he felt he had to to get the Alabama State offense unsettled. Jared Prout coming up the middle. Tavares Jackson, strong guy, but he still gets him down. He's fortunate that he didn't have that ball picked up as he just threw it over the middle of the field. I mean, he got away with it, but that's really a dangerous play on his part. That could have easily been picked off and run the other way. Yeah, on the third down, it's almost better to take the sack, but he was fortunate. So Johnson back to punt it. Cotton standing at his own 40. A high snap. High kick as well. Fair catch. And Cotton's got it right at the 35. And now a flag comes in. Did they make some contact? I don't know. The referees are discussing it once again. I didn't see any contact. Charles Coe is wondering, what in the world did you see out there? Looks like the Alabama State defender just ran by yeah. Cotton, the returner, but I don't think he, he bumped into him or anything. It didn't look like it. Well, let's take another peek at it as the officials huddle. And have another conference call. Fair catch, no problem there. And then just ran under him. And then here, no, there's no contact at all. And then here comes the flag. Yeah, they're waving the flag off. Yeah, well, rightfully so. Yeah, good call by the referee. Yeah. Good non-call, as it turns out. So, 7.57 remaining. This has been a jet airplane taking off today with Alabama State leading by two. Late now in the fourth quarter from Rice Totten Stadium, Alabama State with the ball leading 33-31. 
from Edabina, Mississippi. We bring you greetings today with Eddie Robinson Jr. I'm Dave Armstrong. These two quarterbacks have had themselves quite a day. Jackson and Nelson have thrown for a total of six touchdowns and almost 500 yards. Right now it's first and ten for Alabama State. Or excuse me for Mississippi Valley State. And yeah, nowhere to go for Calvin Woods, and now a flag comes in. In fact, a couple of them. Good job defensively by Alabama State. Just a little screen swing pass that Mississippi Valley State is trying to sneak in there, create a mismatch on the corners, but they weren't buying it. Charles Lewis sorting it all out. A lot of conference calls by the refs tonight. Yeah. Personal foul, face mask, number 33 of the defense. 15 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Still first down. A big break from Mississippi Valley. I mean, they were looking at a, a second and almost 15, and now it's a first down with a 15 yard penalty added on. Closing in on midfield. Look at Aries Nelson today. Trying to get this team at least into field goal range to give them the lead. Again, a couple of missed points earlier today by Alabama State. And now penalties starting to pile up on the Hornets as well. They've been penalized less, but for more yardage. Nelson feeling pressure to his right, runs to his left, slides down across midfield, and goes down at the 48-yard line. A lot still at stake for Alabama State. They have their faint hopes still alive to try to somehow get into that championship game against Grambling. And for Charles Coe, he's got to really hope now because Alabama A&M, a winner today against Alcorn State. Alabama A&M faces Prairie View next week. If they win that game, Alabama A&M and Grambling will play for the SWAC title. But if Alabama A&M should lose that game to Prairie View, now A&M will be a, a pretty good favorite in the contest, but if they should lose, and Alabama State can hang on and win here today, then they would be playing Grambling State. Rumbling, bumbling down that sideline is Walter Burnett. And he takes it down to the 31. Good catch by Burnett, the big fullback. Not a guy that you would expect to have a lot of importance in the passing game. And they just found him standing on the sideline all by his lonesome. Yeah, only his 13th catch of the year. His first here tonight. Clock winding down under six and a half here in the fourth quarter. Close to field goal range already for Joseph Blanco. Man coverage with the motion by Timmons. Nelson, remember we showed you earlier that he was a bit injured, finds Timmons, and Timmons grabs it with Bobby Coleman all over him. Timmons makes the catch at the 20. When we talked talk to Coach Roger Totten, the offensive coordinator, I mean, he told us that Timmons does the motion just to see if they're in the man or zone coverage. And that time, they actually had a double team on him. But the second guy seemed to ease off a little bit, and Timmons was able to get open as Aries Nelson has been buying time to allow Timmons to make second and third moves. And that's always tough. Here he goes in motion again with a man coverage situation. It's time to give, though, is to Burnett. in the Delta Devils booth as Walter Burnett scores for the eighth time this year, the first time here tonight, and it's Mississippi Valley State forging back in front. There you see you have an example of using the pass to set up the run. Mississippi Valley State, a predominantly passing team. They've been passing all night on that set. They sneak in the draw, and nobody's really there for Alabama State. The big guy Burnett is able to get some yards and get into the end zone. 
It's just a little inside handoff out of the shotgun formation. It's a passing formation, but I mean, that's a pretty easy touchdown by Walter Burnett, a big guy who's able just to sneak in there. And there you see in the boot, a guy, Roger Totten, who was a wide receiver here with Jerry Rice and his older brother, Willie Totten, in the uh, early 80s when they were having all that success. And he was actually a coach at Alabama State back in the early 90s. So he's been around the swag and well-traveled and a very good coach. Yeah, absolutely. Eddie, it was almost like they used Timmons, too, on that last play as a decoy. They sent him in motion to the far side of the field, and they ran the play back to the near side. Right, and on the play before that, Alabama State actually had a double team on Timmons, and he, although he was still able to catch the ball. But you can see Timmons is getting a lot of attention today, and, and as he should. So you can also use him as a decoy. Like you say, run him across the formation, make everybody get their attention on Timmons. Then you sneak him with a draw to Walter Burnett, and nobody's really there to stop the big guy. Big discussion. Now, I think they're going to go for two. They already lead by four. One more point really won't help them. Two might, though, especially with all the problems that Alabama State has had with the extra points today. A two-point conversion here gives you a six-point lead. And a six-point lead could be big. Like you said, Anthony Johnson has already missed two extra points today, but instead they're going to line up and kick the one point. Well, I'm a little surprised they're going to kick it here. I don't, I don't see the, the logic in having a five-point lead as opposed to four. Better to have a six-point lead. After some discussion, though, they do kick the point after, and it is good. And they tack one more on the board and take a five-point lead. I'd have gone for the two there. Really nothing to lose and a lot to gain. Yeah, because of the kicking struggles of Alabama State, as we mentioned, definitely six points is a, is a big lead in this game because you don't know if the guy can make that extra point. Well, some great players in the SWAC conference. No question, we already told you about Rice and Totten. How about from Jackson State, old sweetness himself, Walter Payton. Running back for Jackson State, 71 through 74. 66 touchdowns. In fact, finished fourth in the Heisman balloting in 1974. And went on to greatness with the Chicago Bears. Look at a, the Hall of Famers from the NFL that have played in the SWAC. Stallworth in Houston and Lem Barney, former player with the Detroit Lions, and Peyton and Jackie Slater. And also Willie Brown and Buck Buchanan, great player from the Chiefs, Willie Davis, Charlie Joyner, Mel Blunt. Great players from the SWAC that have gone on to greatness in the NFL. Well, Blunt has always been one of my favorites. I mean, a big cornerback. He's the guy who pretty much started the whole bump and run. He was just too physical as a cornerback. Big kick here is going to go through the end zone. Well, don't count Alabama State out of this game, folks. Not by any stretch of the imagination. Plenty of time on the clock. 5.28 remaining. And a touchdown would give them the lead one more time. This has been a, the ultimate seesaw battle here today. Hey, tonight's ESPN News coverage of college football continues at 7 Eastern. Two teams from the SWAC battle as Jackson State meets Prairie View a &M. College football on ESPN U tonight. We'll get you to that game right at the end of this one. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Little swing pass and nothing doing at all for Keldrick Williams. Those linebackers are coming up big. Coming up big for us all day and all year is our own Mike Hall. Mike? That's what I'm here for, Dave. Let's check out a couple scores. LSU Bama, we got a 47-yard field goal attempt, and he kicks the bleep out of it. But Chris Jackson, not quite the aim, so we are still tied at 10 in the fourth quarter. Meanwhile, Iowa, Wisconsin, the Hawkeyes are up 10. Only 75 seconds to go in Barry Alvarez's last home game. And if the Hawkeyes win, they're bowl eligible, Dave. All right. The Hawkeyes and Wisconsin. Wisconsin's taken it on the chin the last couple of weeks. Boy, LSU with a chance to take that lead. This one over the hands of Al Vance Robinson, and a flag comes in. Wow, late flag by the field judge. It's going to be a pass interference. Titan showing a lot of emotion on the sidelines today. It's number 39. Holding was against an eligible receiver. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. 
Well, we've talked a lot today about what's at stake for Alabama State, but really for Willie Totten in trying to rebuild this program, there's a lot at stake for him as well. A win today gives them a winning season for the first time since 1996. Yes, I mean, they have a lot of, they had a lot of success when he was here, of course, with Jerry Rice in the early 80s, but lately Mississippi Valley State hasn't had a lot of winning seasons, so it would be really big in his fourth year if he can win tonight or next week and get to a winning season. That gives him a first down for Alabama State. On the keeper, it's Jackson, and he's hit down hard after a short gain of three. Hit down by Chavin Johnson. Yeah, big Chavin Johnson, I mean, he's really diagnosing that play as just a little fake handoff up the middle, trying to get the quarterback on the one-on-one -on -one situation. Well, these guys wore themselves out in the first half. We've seen some good offense in the second half, but nothing like we saw in the first. And Mississippi Valley State with that last drive going up over 150 yards. Alabama State needs to complete this drive. Short pass. That completed to Robinson. He stays on his feet and falls forward up to the 37-yard line. And that's going to bring up a third and two. And now we've got an injured player back in the backfield for Alabama State. I didn't catch the number. Defensive coordinator for Mississippi Valley State, Coach Washington, he was real concerned about all of the different screens that Alabama State runs. We had some earlier today to number two, to Keldrick Williams, and also to Al Vance Robinson. And they've been highly successful, but you can see there they defended it pretty well. And he said that they don't really have a, a rhyme or reason. There's no predictability. Most mm -hmm. teams run it on second and long or, or you know third and long. In those situations, they can run a screen at any time. But I think overall, his defense has defended the screen play extremely good today. Clayton McDonald, who is down for Mississippi Valley State. We'll see if we can see what caused the injury. Here he comes. There he is, 43 right there, and kind of runs in and up the back of his own player. Looks like he ran into Pullum. And now being helped off the field. Clayton McDonald, one of their talented trio of linebackers, limping off. Looks like it could be some kind of an ankle problem. So they're going to move the clock back to 345, we were just told. Of course, Clayton is third on the team in tackles, and yep. all three of these linebackers are extremely talented. Prout, Knight, Prout and Knight both had a sack today. And he's just extremely active guys who are not only active in run support, but also in, in blitzing the quarterback. Well, by far and away, the best trio of linebackers in the swag. Definitely. Well, a third and two situation here. Remember when we said that you can't stop Randolph? Yes, you can. You can if you're the Delta Devils. Now a decision for Charles Coe. Do you go for it here on fourth down with a clock winding down near three minutes? This play means a lot to Alabama State trying to keep pace with Alabama A&M. For Mississippi Valley State, a chance for them maybe to have a winning record this year. Again, for the first time in almost a decade. They're going to go for it on fourth down. They need the 39. Williams cannot get outside. The flag is thrown. It could be a face mask call against the Delta Devils. Great job of Mississippi Valley State on defense. I mean, they've been running that play to Randolph the other way and stretch. Oh, there it is right there. Sam Irons, the safety, who comes up in run support. You can see he grabbed the face mask. Really his only alternative to try to stop him because Keldrick would have gotten around the corner if he didn't. Tough break for the Devils because it was a good defensive Personal stand. Personal foul, face mask on the defense, number 31. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. Result automatic first down. That's a good call. I mean, and you saw it clearly on the replay. Now, Coach Totten might not like that call, especially at the time of the game, but you clearly saw on our replay that Irons did grab and hang on to that face mask. Yeah, it's a tough break for the defense. I mean, the guy's just hustling. He's trying to make a play, and when you're grabbing and stretching and scratching, 
crash, and sometimes you just grab things you're not supposed to. And that takes it all the way across midfield with that penalty. Instead of turning the ball over on downs, fresh life for the Hornets, and going downfield, a wide open is Maddox! Maddox down to the six! And I love the call by offensive coordinator Chris Kapilovic. You have everybody in the stands complaining and fussing about the face mask call. What do you do? You throw a strike down the field. Here you can see Tavares Jackson. They're running a post route. He gets behind the safety. The safety is sitting there looking at the quarterback. Nobody's there. Great catch by Maddox, and he almost gets into the end zone, setting him up perfect inside the 10-yard line with a first and goal. Edwards saved the touchdown, at least for the moment. Now first and goal, and they do need a touchdown, the Hornets. First and goal from the six. Jackson hemmed in. Tosses it into the end zone. A flag comes in. The pass is incomplete. Wow. That was like a 15-second play. <laughs> <laughs> Probably have Lyman downfield in that situation when he starts to scramble side to side. Guys lose, lose track of where the quarterback is. Don't know if he's going to run or throw. Oh, An eligible for the man downfield on the offense, number 75. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay first down. Co, knowing that that was Evora Hall, who was signal for the man. You talked about how that play took 15 minutes. Hall probably felt the same way. <laughs> yeah, those big guys, I mean, they lose track. I mean, they, they're used to run blocking. They don't like to pass block and have to go side to side, quarterback scrambling like Fran Tarkenton. But he's doing a good job of buying time, trying to find an open receiver. You think extra points don't matter? Two missed extra points by Alabama State in this game. Otherwise, they could go for a field goal. Instead, now they need the touchdown. Incomplete. Second and goal. The ball of the 13. There is the offensive coordinator for the Hornets. That is Chris Kapilovich talking things over now, trying to decide what to call here on second and goal from the 13. Down by five, of course, Alabama State needs to get into the end zone. Don't count out to Boris Jackson. They also like to run screens in this situation also. So, I mean, they have a lot of different weapons that they can use. It would be tough for Mississippi Valley State to try to stop them in this situation. Here comes the blitz, and they throw to that side. Boy, they had Williams. If he can get that ball, they had it set up perfectly because the blitz was coming from that side. And that's what we were talking about, the screen. Remember, Coach Washington said Alabama State would run a screen in any situation. It would have been a great call, just a little bit over the outstretched hands of Keldrick Williams. But as you can see, if he would have caught that ball, he's in the end zone. Mm. Perfect play call. Right, but Mississippi Valley State, they like to blitz. They have two linebackers with over eight sacks, and they're going to bring pressure. And sometimes you get beat when you do blitz. Coach Cole know that he could have almost had one. Yeah. He was so happy Knight was blitzing and had it set up but could not make the play. Now here's Jackson trying to make a play. Jackson stays on his feet. He goes down to the three. It'll be fourth and goal from there. Wow, what an effort. Jackson gets up limping. Both quarterbacks showing why they're league leaders in, this, in the SWAC today. Not just in passing, but also as being rushing quarterbacks. Nobody's really open. It's third and goal. Game is on the line. Your season is on the line. You want to get into the championship game. You take the game into your own hands and make people miss, turn into a running back. You almost get into the end zone. So after all this today, after all the offense, after all the calls, the penalties, it really boils down to this one play. It's fourth and goal with the ball sitting at the four-yard line. And Alabama State, they want to talk things over. I think this is as much to give Tavares Jackson a chance to catch his breath and maybe regroup from a limping injury as much as anything else. So we'll see what the Hornets call here on fourth down. 
And this is pretty much the ball game. I think you have to keep the ball in Tavares Jackson's hand. I mean, even though he's limping, you can see he can make people miss as a runner, and he can also throw. Look for him to maybe get a roll out to his passing side and get a chance to throw and catch, throw or, pass, throw or run, because he's the guy who can make the defense break down and hopefully get Al Vance Robinson to one of those guys open. And if you're Kapilovich, you almost have to assume they're going to blitz because they've been doing it in almost every situation here today. Yeah, I mean, the screen would be a gutsy call. Like I said, Alabama State runs screens in every situation. They've hit them big with a screen. But I think in this situation, I want Tavares Jackson to have the ball in his hand. Yeah. Let me win or lose with the guy who's been carrying me all year long as a, as a senior and a leader on this team. Amazing. When you think about how you boil down a season, here is Alabama State. Losers in each of their last two weeks. They blew a big lead a couple of weeks ago against Alabama A&M. They came fighting back in the fourth quarter against Grambling State last week only to be denied. And now here they are facing a fourth and goal against Mississippi Valley State. And for the Delta Devils, if they stop them here, they'll have a winning season. Look at how they have done in the red zone. Since the first two games, they have been perfect. But here, they don't need a field goal. They need a touchdown. It is incomplete. Batted around and incomplete. And Mississippi Valley State hangs on. Great job defensively by the Delta Devils. to cover a pass when you only have to go two or three yards. Tavares Jackson tried to throw a strike in there, but the ball was batted in the air. Nobody was home, and Mississippi Valley State looks like they're going to go on to win, and like you said, get their first winning season since 1996. Throwing it into a lot of traffic. And that's big Ronald Green. I don't even know what he was doing back there because, of course, he's a, a defensive tackle who's usually rushing the quarterback, but he was able to, to get a hand on the ball, seems like. Ronald Green comes up huge on that play. And Tavares Jackson and the Hornets are denied. And again, you think back to those two missed extra points. They didn't seem like much in that first quarter, but now they loom especially large for Alabama State. If not for those two missed extra points, it very well could be instead of Ronald Green and the uh, Delta Devils celebrating, we could be heading to overtime. Yeah, I mean, they had a field goal attempt, but the coaches are talking with Tavares Jackson there, and there's, there's Reggie Barlow, and of course the offensive coordinator Chris Kapilovic, and just a real tough situation. I mean, he put up real big numbers all day long. It looked like no one would be, would be able to stop Alabama State today. But of course the time is starting to run out, and now they find themselves on the short end of the stick once again. So it's the Hornets who are stung perhaps for the third straight week. What a series it has been for Charles Coe and crew. They had things all set up, didn't they? And they were on a roll. Looked like they were going to head back to yet another SWAC championship game. But now, with only one timeout remaining, really all Mississippi Valley State has to do at this point is hang on to the football. And Alabama State was the winners, were the winners of six in a row. They started the season off 0-1 and, and ran off six straight victories. So they were in definite position to get into the Eastern division lead and win the SWAC conference championship once again. Really Totten's still upset. He wants a play clock and he wants the game clock to be running. Let's Alabama go. State takes their last time out. They can't stop the clock again. Coach Titan coaching all the way to the end. He realizes what's at stake. But I think he can relax just a little bit right now because they should have this game in hand. All they have to do is down it a couple of times, and this game will be over. And congratulations, really, to Coach Totten and for this Delta Devil team. I mean, they have risen up here this year, and in his fourth year, they're going to have this winning season. And even though they don't have any chance to play for the SWAC championship, you take little steps in a program to get to that bigger step. And this was a good first step for Totten and for the Delta Devils to win this game, to have a winning season. They can start to build on that next year. I mean, definitely, you have to look at when he came to Mississippi Valley State, they were 0-11 when he came here 
here as a coach. So he's really turned the program around in, in a short period of time. And of course, Aries Nelson and Tyrone Timmons are both returning guys. And he's going to be the premier offensive player in the SWAC next year. Yeah, they got Calvin Woods back. Joey Haggett's a freshman, another running back. So they pretty much have their offense coming back intact next year. And that's good news for Mississippi Valley State. So Mississippi Valley State can start to celebrate a win here today, their sixth of the year and their first winning season since 96. And I know for Coach Totten, he wants to close it out in style next week. They take on Southeastern University, the Lions, one week from now. But the high fives all around and the smiles all around. And why not? On a day when Willie Totten was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame, he gets the path at the end, and he'll be carried off this field in celebration as Mississippi Valley State wins it 38-33. Once again, our final score here from Mississippi Valley State, the Delta Devils come back to win it 38-33. For Eddie Robinson, Jr., and our entire crew here at Itabina, Mississippi, Dave Armstrong saying so long, and congratulations to the Delta Devils. Tough luck for Alabama State here today. Despite all that offense, it was Mississippi Valley State jumping in celebration at the end. And now, let's join Mike Hall in our ESPNU 